everybody and welcome to FWA Vendetta 2003. I'm your host Tony Jones alongside none other than Nick London. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a real treat tonight. We've got a tournament featuring James Ty, Flash Barker, Jack Sager and Jody Flash. One of these men will become the number one contender to the FWA heavyweight title. We've got the opening rounds tonight. That's right, Nick. We're also going to see the Zebra Kid defend his FWA All England Championship against Mark Five Star Belton. And we're also going to see the ECW legend Super Crazy take on Johnny Storm for his XPW European title. And ladies and gentlemen, first time ever, it's going to be a first blood match for the FWA Tag Team titles. The family will defend against Ulf Herman and Alex Shane. And we're going to round it all off with a two out of three falls challenge for the FWA heavyweight title. Doug, the anarchist Williams will defend against the American Dragon. Nick, I can hardly wait, but let's hand things over now to Jane Childs. Crystal decanter being presented to the FWA from the Broxbourne Civic Hall for all their hard work. What's the point in a bleeding decanter without any whiskey in it, Tony? Nick, this isn't about alcohol, it's about thanks. Pass me the decanter, I just found a use for it. I'm gonna be sick. with our opening contest. Raj Ghost taking on the FWA's Benfertown Nikita. Raj Ghost tonight will be going one-on-one -on -one with Nikita, as she said, and I'm looking forward to this contest because we're going to get to see an intergender match for the first time opening up an FWA event. Gentlemen, the FWA, Ben Fatal herself, Nikita. Now, Tony, you know, normally know how I feel about women in the ring. They should be seen, but they should be seen being up men. However, I have a whole new world of respect for this young lady after I saw Frontiers of Honor. It was quite frankly after that huge balcony dive, she wiped out the entire family like a car wreck. It's true, Nick, that is going to be one image that is going to be burned in my head for a very, very long time. This should be an interesting contest, Tony. Both of these individuals in the ring will be training very hard now at the FWA Academy. I'll imagine they'll know each other fairly well. Referee Steve Linsky's ringing the bell, and we're ready to start. It's true, Nick. They do, uh, they do adopt a similar style, but I think it's going to be quickness over power tonight. And we see the handshake there, and the match is underway. Lovely handshake there, and I'm feeling a bit nauseous once again. They're circling up. We're getting ready for the lockup of the show. There it is. The opening lockup. And Raj goes now for front headlock. As Nikita there lands some blows into Raj Edmund. And a nice arm drag takes Raj goes down. Got him under the arm lock there. Raj goes is gonna want to maybe get out of that as soon as he can. Nikita obviously with a good technique there, but Raj has rolled back onto his feet. Overhead wrist lock now. Nikita still in control here. Raj Ghost wants to reverse or into a nice hand lock there. A nice arm drag of Raj's. Now Raj has got the arm lock as he picks Nikita up into a front face lock. Raj there obviously matching Nikita move for move with this technical wrestling. Nikita there, a couple of cheeky punches to the gut. Oh, and the Raj with another headlock. Cut Nikita right off there. That's right, Nick. He's got the move back onto himself. Goes over again. Floats over, takes Nikita down. But Nikita uses the leg strength. Raj Ghost managed to nip up and straight into... Oh, Nick! 
straight into the headlock takeover, but it looks like he may have DDT Nikita on the way down. Did not smack ahead a bit harsh there, Tony. This is just going to show the technique of Raj Ghost. Doesn't matter if it's something simple as a headlock takeover, he's really in this match for business. Raj really needs the momentum, and it looks like another headlock, but Nikita with a roll up! Quickly one! Only a one there, Nikita back up and a roll up of her own, but Raj with a block floats over. Nikita rolls through and Raj was thrown into the ropes and another arm drag. Another arm drag from Nikita there and she's back into the arm lock onto Raj goes. It's where they started and it's in the same position at the moment. Nikita now looks as though she's... It looks like an overhead wrist lock again, another arm drag there. And the kid, look at the technique though. She's driving the knee into the side of Raj's head while supplying that pressure to the shoulder. Obviously she knows what she's doing. Raj rolls back onto his feet again and a knee to the knee to the stomach there. Nikita firing away with a couple of stiff forearms and he, she whips Raj into the right. Raj ducks the clothesline over the key and he misses. He went with swing and a miss there, Nick, as Nikita tries to go with a roll through there. Raj managed to hold onto the ropes and he goes with a clothesline. Nikita ducks under and Raj with a leapfrog again. Nikita off the ropes. Oh, but there was no avoiding that, Nick. There's no pretty way of saying it. It was a knee to the stomach and Nikita was taken down. Well, it might have winged Nikita. She certainly stopped in a trap. Raj going for a pinfall, but yeah, as I thought, a little early in the moment. Only a two count now, Nick, but it seems as though Raj goes for that one move has now gone into the driving seat. As Raj goes now, he's cinching in that abdominal stretch and after that knee, that is going to hurt like hell. Maybe Raj might be working on the rib area of the Femme Fatale cell, but Nikita with the reversal and now the pressure's on Raj. Nikita now firing elbows into the ribs of Raj. I'm not sure why Linsky's allowing that. Oh, but Raj with a... Oh! From the abdominal stretch taking her down in some kind of driver maneuver. You know, and if one thing that has, 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 has been made obvious to me during this match, they are matching each other move for move. Anything Raj does, Nikita does, but he's doing it just as well, if not better. I'll tell you one thing about Raj, I've noticed a very subtle mean streak coming out of him this late. He might be in the ring with a girl, but he's treating her like she's a man. And there he go, a couple of fists, fists of that to the stomach. Takes her out of the corner again with the whip. Nikita hits the corner, but over and over. From Raj Ghost, but Nikita is back in control as she dodges out of the corner and some kicks there to the abdomen of Raj Ghost as she sends him off into the corner. Raj manages to reverse it over the top springboard, over knee, and there we go. Kick to the gut. Raj caught, flips him through. It looks like he's going for a hammer into the corner. Just sends a crashing into the corner turnbuckles, Nick. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective as Raj Ghost on the outside now looks like he's going for some sort of springboard maneuver. Oh, and an awesome splash, Nick. This is just working on the area that he damaged early on with that knee. There was the knee, there was the abdominal stretch, and now there was the splash from the spring ball. He is obviously targeting one area of Nikita's body. Raj goes, he's looking to put the hurts on the Femme Fatale. Nikita now firing up. She wants to get out of this predicament. A couple of forearms, but there, Raj just cut her off with a knee, and he's setting up for, uh-oh, setting up with some sort of double underhook there. This could be lethal, no arms for protection, but Nikita floated over, that was beautiful. Ducks the clothesline, and the clothesline duck. Nikita now with a monkey flip. Monkey flip taking Raj goes down there. Nikita used her ring smarts to the best advantage. As she goes up and over now with a total roll head scissors. Beautifully executed by the Femme Fatale. She grabs Raj Ghosh and that's a roll and drop. Could this be it? Nikita cover. Two. No. Nick, you know what? I didn't think Nikita would be able to get Raj Ghosh up. But with ease, she managed to pick him up, drop him down. That was an awesome Samoan drop. I thought that would have been it. Thunderous kick to the back there. Raj is rolling around in the ring. He is at the mercy of Nikita at the moment. Nikita picks him up. Nikita launches him to the corner. But Raj stopped himself. Elbow to the face of Nikita. And now Raj going up top. But Nikita's managed to catch him. A couple of kicks to the rib there. And a nice forearm. I don't know what she might be sitting up for, Tony. I don't know, Nick. It looks like it could be some sort of high-risk maneuver whenever you're in the corner with either of these two. Oh, my word, Nick. It's a dangerous place, as Nikita has just found out for herself. Raj goes on the second rope now. Oh, drop kick, taking Nikita down to the mat. He glimmed Nikita with that drop kick, and it was there she is. She's down. Raj now could be... No, he's not going for the pinfall. It looks like he's going for yet another hit or miss. High-risk maneuver, Tony. This might win the match if he hit it, but we'll see. Raj goes off the... Oh, my word, Nick. He was going for another splash. Obviously targeting the injured area 
of the stomach of Nikita. That drop kick, it was aimed right in the center of the stomach. The big splash, if he'd have hit that, that would have been it. Nikita would have been out. But she used ring awareness and ring smarts, managed to roll out of weight. As Nikita is once again back in control, placing Raj Ghosh onto the top row. Raj Ghosh went for that frag fox splash, but there was no water in the pond. And now Nikita herself is going for hit or miss. It looks like top row Horikarada. No, but Raj manages to flip Nikita off as Nikita lands on her feet, though, with Cat like a Jill in. Oh, what? Top row arm drag from Nikita. Raj Ghosh is down and out. Beautifully executed there. Nikita bounced right back up. Arm drag from the top right. This one, one the X2. Oh, what a kick out there from Raj Ghosh. There's still a bit of fight in him. As she goes in for the pin again, two. No! Once again, Raj Ghosh manages to get the pin up. Nikita has got to be thinking, right, he's targeting one area of me. Maybe this is what I'm going to do to him. Nikita signaling for something, but Raj oh, cuts her straight off with a chin breaker. And now he's going for the Ghostbuster. Can he hit it? Nikita fighting for her life. Underneath, reversal. Reversal again. Nikita throws Raj into the ropes. Go for the hip top. Raj rolls through. Re reversal into the ropes again. Nikita jumps over. Raj now frees up. Close line, but misses. And Raj underneath, and he's got a set up for the pump handle again, Tony. It looks like he's going for the pump handle, Nick, but Nikita up on the shoulders, manages to roll through. One, two, he's over the big one. the three count, it was a one count. Nikita used the weight, managed to roll over Raj's back and pin his shoulders to the mat. He looks like he... What could he have done, Nick? Nikita used her weight and agility against Raj Gold. Nikita, fantastic technique there. Very tight roll up. Nikita got the one, two, three, in my opinion, absolutely out of nowhere. But the three count was there regardless. A huge win for Nikita. She is in a roll here, but look at the frustration on the face of Raj Ghost. I think the expression says it all, really, Tony. Well, to be honest, Nick, Raj Ghost was going for the Ghost Buster, and if he'd have hit that, it would have been all over. But... Oh, whoa, 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 Tony. Sorry to cut you off like that, but. I hear the music of the family. I don't think we've got any interview time scheduled with them. Have you got anything on your notes there? I don't have anything on my running sheet, Nick, but when have the family ever done anything they were supposed to? They do what they want, they go where they please. As the family, it looks as though every member of the family is making their way down to ringside. That is one very dark and sinister army. And there you see Paul Travell carrying the tag team championship. Solid gold, Scott Parker, Ash Foreman, you remember that. Ian Disciple, of course, the Messiah. Brandon Thomas. Nick, maybe they're on their way down to ringside to tell everyone about the first blood match tonight. They want to inflict as much pain and damage onto Alex Shane and Paul Herman as possible. Maybe they're going to try and outsight them in the ring. You never know. I mean, obviously it's a war of wits, it's a war of words, but tonight when they meet, it will be a war of blood. Rose Ghost! Rose Ghost! Nick, I'm not entirely sure why Greg Lambert and the family are out here, but it seems as though Raj Ghosh may be their target and not Alex Shane nor Furman. I'm not entirely sure why, but I mean, it looks as though the truth wants to have a word with Raj Ghosh. This does not look good for the 18-year-old FWA competitor. I've been watching you for a long time. to October the 13th, 2002. British Uprising, Raj. Do you remember that? You remember when you were in a triple threat match with James Tide and Jack Xavier? You remember that? And you remember, although you didn't win that match, Raj, you stole the show. And all my colleagues in the wrestling press, all the reporters, all the reviewers said so. They said, Raj Ghosh, wow, 17 years old, teenage sensation. You are going places, Raj. Where did it all go wrong? Because, remember, another date, Raj. March 16th, 2003, in this very arena, FWA Crunch. What happened to the teenage sensation then? You got beat by Simmons, and these people booed you out of the building!
2003 rose last month. Remember the York Hall Bethel Green? Remember Frontiers of Honour? Biggest night of your life? Biggest night in the FWA's history? Were you in a title match? Were you wrestling one of the Americans? No! FWA management put you in a match with Birchall and you got absolutely destroyed! And just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, June 22nd, 2003, that's not funny. Raj, FWA Vendetta, you just, just got beat by a girl. So Raj, you've gone, in just over eight months, you've gone from hero to zero. But I don't blame you, Raj. I blame Alex Shane. I blame these people. I blame FWA management for holding you back. And what you need to do, Raj, is you need to take a look at each one of these men in the ring. Take a good look at the family, because it wasn't too long ago. They were in your shoes, Raj. They were overlooked, and now look at them. They are the FWA Tag Team Champions. They are the most dominant force in British wrestling. And they are the team that's beaten Alex Shane and Ulf Herman all over this country and will beat them again tonight in the First Blood match. So you ask yourself a question, Raj Ghosh. Do you want to be Alex Shane's puppet? Because I know he doesn't like you, Raj. Anybody who reads the internet will know he doesn't like you. He thinks you're a troublemaker. He doesn't want you to be a superstar. Are you going to listen to him? Or are you going to join the family? You know it makes sense, Raj. Join the family and you can turn your life around. What do you say? Don't do it, Raj. It'll be a huge mistake. Well, I don't know, Tony. Sometimes you've got to be selfish to be successful in your career. What do you think I look like with a shaved head? Oh, Lambert. I'm only 18. And these three losses are really going to sit back on my career. I'll get over them. Turn the fuck off! And right now, I don't want to listen to you. I don't want to listen to Alex Shane. I don't want to listen to you! I just want to listen to me. And I know I don't want you. I know that I don't think I need you either. So quite frankly, you can take your offer and shove it. This is despicable. You don't make the family cross, Tony. Pun intended. And Raj Ghosh is finding this out the hard way. You see, he's only a young lad. He doesn't know what he's saying. So Raj Ghosh, tonight you may well be a young FWA superstar, but now you're going to be a young family sacrifice. Wait a minute, Tony. I'm sure no problem. Raj Ghosh better thank his lucky stars. It looks as though Alex Shane and Ulf Herman do not want to wait a second longer, Nick, for their FWA tag team title match. Ladies and gentlemen, first things first, never fear, because the show swearers are here. But tonight is not about talking. Tonight is about violence, and we're going to keep this short and sweet. We have a no DQ first blood and in once and for all, 
is by kicking your screw knees, getting those two asses all around the Bronx Bulls Civic Hall right here tonight. And there are two things you can do about it. That's the piss blood from your head and shit your pants. These two men have a date with destiny, Tony, much like the Duke of Danger and his butler Simmons, who tonight will finally go against the Man Mountain, Virgil. That's right, Nick, and today our FW camera could pull up with the twisted genius Dean Ayers. Here's what he had to say. Well, the twisted genius is back where he belongs, back at ringside in the FWA. Now, the old school came, the old school went. It fell apart because there are too many egos trying to control too many people who didn't want to listen to what I had to say. So what did I do? I went the opposite direction. I found myself someone just starting out, someone who'd listen to everything I had to say, someone who would grow under my guidance. And that man is the rookie monster, Burchill. I'm telling you all, FWA, you're all putting being put on a warning here, because you've seen him run in on anyone's matches. We will do what we want to do, how we want to do it, and whenever we please. I'm telling you now, you're looking at a future champion. So remember the name, Burchill. Some of you may be unfamiliar with Mark Firestar Bell and but after an impressive string of matches on the FWA British Breakout Tour, FWA officials decided to sign this match. Tony, I was backstage at the British Breakout Tour and I saw that match. Mark Firestar Belton versus the Zebra Kid and I saw some of the most sickening stiff blows that I've ever seen in the FWA ring. If this match is anything like what we saw on that evening, we're guaranteed to see a 100% barn burner. Ladies and gentlemen, the Zebra Kid, ever since he has held the All England Championship, he has had a vice like grip upon it, and he has turned away many a competitor. However, Tony, tonight he could very well be upended by his opponent, Mark Five Star Belton. Nick, it was a year ago that the Zebra Kid managed to beat Mark Sloan at Vendetta 2002 for the FWA All England title. That night, Mark Belt was sitting in the crowd quite on, and here we are a year later, and he's about to face Zebra for the very same title. Very prestigious championship, Tony. It's not as big as the FWA heavyweight title, but this is truly something worth fighting for. Mark Belton versus the Zebra Kid, and we're going to get ready to go. There we are, Nick, with the ring of the bell, and you can hear the Zebra's fans already. Did he bring his own coach load of friends and family with him, Tony? Nick, I'm not sure, just Zebra Kid is amazingly popular amongst the FWA fans. I believe it's his brash attitude and the fact that he does whatever he likes. Zebra Kid, one word I'd use to describe him is solid. He is a solid competitor, but so is Mark Belton. Handshake was offered, but uh, I think Zebra said it all there, Tony. Is a proper welcome in the FWA from the Zebra Kid. It's Jake.
exchanges of kicks there, and they're starting off quick. Zebra Kids launched off the right, cross body, off the ropes again. He jumps over, five star, five star with a leap from. And there we go, Zebra still going off the ropes, another leap from. And now, and a kick, and the Zebra Kid is down. Nice spinny heel kick there from five star Mark Belton as he's up and over with the Hurricanrana, taking down Zebra Kid. Mark Belton coming out with some heavy moves already. Zebra Kid caught him that time, flipped him over the top. Oh! Up and over, Nick Mark Belton trying to get through the second rope. He was cut off once and then drop kicked for his trouble. Look at the smile now on his face. That had to hurt, Tony. Do you see what I mean by a barn burner? These men are throwing blows at each other and they're making the most sickening noise that echoing through the Brock's Bond Civic Hall. You can hear the fans, Nick, firmly behind. Zebra Kid and up and over with one of his not pretty, not graceful, but effective dives to the outside. We've often discussed how the Zebra Kid, he's often thrown caution to the wing. Like you said, he ain't graceful. He's just solid, brute force, and he's setting up for a suplex on the outside. Oh! Nick, the mats are there for protection, but it still hurts like hell. A lovely suplex there onto Mark Belton. This is what's so dangerous about the Zebra Kid. Not only does he throw his own health out of the window, but also that of his opponent, and the Zebra Kid gyrating a little there for his hometown fans. It looks as though Zebra Kid may be setting up for something, or maybe he's just going to let Mark Belton get back to the ring so he can inflict some more punishment. I think these two men want to pace it out. It started <laughs> awfully quickly, and now these two men, I think, want to just slow it down a little bit. They've got to keep the pace just right. And Mark Belton quite plainly showing the disrespect that maybe Zebra Kid showed him in the beginning. But here we go. Go for the knuckle lock. In with the wrist lock. And Zebra Kid just laying the blows in straight away. Vintage Zebra Kid. He got the technical wrist lock and then started pelting away. But Five Star showing the agility that brought him to the dance. Reverses the wrist lock. The family and attendants appreciate the ability of Mark Belton. There he is. Funding away on the shoulder and the ribs, but Zebra's rolling through. Zebra with a roll through and the drop toe hold takes him down into the front face lock. Looks like a bit of a grub in there and the Zebra Kid. I don't know, I don't want to know what he was doing just there, but the fans liked it. There we go. Wrist lock once again. Zebra Kid back up into the wrist lock. They're trying to exchange submission moves at the moment, Nick. But earlier they were just trying to exchange blows. We're going to see a bit of everything in this match. A lovely sequence there from Mark Bell as he goes through the legs of Zebra, nips up, and he looks like he was going for some sort of kick up, lands over onto his feet and Zebra Kid plants him down to the ground. Zebra Kid managed to catch the second attempt of the Hurukarana and oh, Five Star got planted and there's another one of those firm, firm kicks to the ribs and Five Star spills to the outside. Sending him across the ring then to the outside. Zebra Kid is not a man you want to toy with, Nick. That's what I'm going to say. Now remember the All England Championship advantage. Zebra Kid cannot lose a title via a count out. So he's dragged Five Star back in. But you know he could win it that way. What's this? Looks like he's setting up top for something, Tony. Zebra Kid is a dangerous man on the top rope. And it looks as though, yeah, you see the Zebra Kid there gesturing. It looks as though Mark Belton might not be getting as lucky as he thought tonight. Looks like he's setting up for something. Oh, poking the eye there for the fans enjoyment he's setting up for something looks like he's going for some sort of oh wait no we've seen this before oh my word nick top rope superplex it must have killed mark bell but it would have taken something out yeah you can see zebra kids down on the mat as well he looks as though zebra's clutching the back of his head he may have hit down a bit hard i'm not entirely sure for a minute there i thought we were going to see zebra kids top rope ddt but he did a superplex instead and that has got to win five star oh, right over there that's an illegal Nick, move, that's an illegal move. Referee Andrew Coyne's going to want to admonish the Zebra Kid, and he does now, showing him the yellow card. Another action like that, and Zebra Kid will be taken out of the match. I think somebody ought to talk to Andrew Coyne after this. I'm sure the power driver was a red card, I thought, Tony, but I suppose because it's the All England title, he wants to give it a wide berth. Yellow card for the Zebra Kid. If he receives another one, he will get the red, and he will be disqualified. But the five-star flash, he is up already, and he is working on the Zebra Kid. It seems as though Nick that pole driver gave Mark Belton a little bit of time to recover and get back to his feet. Zebra Kid now sends him off into the ropes and clotheslines him over the top rope. Mark Belton manages to hold on though as he springboards up and over and he takes Zebra Kid down with his shoulder block. Brings him back up. I think Mark Belton's got one thing on his mind and it's the destruction of the Zebra Kid. But Zebra doing what he does best goes with a poke to the eye. And oh! There's an implant DDT and the Zebra Kid is in control. And wait... 
Oh, clip of the head there with that kick. And you can see the pain expression on the ref's face. Never mind Mark Belton. It's true, Nick. Referee Andrew Coyne looked like that must have hurt Mark Belton. Mark Belton is in the bottom ropes now. Zebra Kid's free. Oh! Oh, Tony, my lord! That was just painful looking. Nick, it looks as though Zebra Kid may be targeting one area of Mark Belton's body, and it's not something we'd normally see, but the Zebra Kid is unorthodox. After that, Mark Belton might have two Adam Apples, and now Zebra Kid, he's over the top rope. However, he saves himself. He's setting up... Oh, no, Nick, not a super not a super Nick. No, no, Mark Belton's managed to land on the outside of the apron as they're trading chops now. Oh, Nick, can you hear this? I can. I can see the sweat and the blood fly. And there we go. Mark, Mark Belton sets him up for something. Flips over the top. He's... Oh, no. I thought Here we go. Up and over. Oh, he managed to catch the top rope on the way over, but he still managed to wipe out the Zebra Kid as both men are down on the outside. Referee Andrew Point outside taking care of business. Mark Belton in an act of perhaps desperation flew himself over the top rope into Zebra Kid. Perhaps in retaliation for the earlier dive we saw from Zebra. However, Mark Belton, first one into the ring. How he's got to bring Zebra in. And there's the Zebra Kid. The fans are firmly behind both these men at the moment. Nick, it's been an awesome contest. But at the moment, Mark Belton is in control. A nice body slam there from Mark Belton and a thunderous kick to the back of Zebra Kid. But Zebra's up straight away and he manages to take him over. Oh! And then, oh my word! Bloody hell, Tony! That kick to the Zebra Kid pissed him off and he got a kick of his own in. And now the two men are facing off. Four on there from Five Star. Four on by Zebra. And they're just trading blows. This is becoming personal, Tony. They're going back and forth, Nick, with a lovely spinning heel kick there from Mark Bell taking down the Zebra Kid. Nick, you couldn't have said it better. Back and forth, back and forth. Just when you think one's got the advantage, the other one comes back. And as we see Mark Belton now climbing to the top rope, he can be very effective on a high-risk manoeuvre. Belton managed to get the advantage with that educated feet of his, but now he's on top. He's got a... Oh, a swing and a miss there. Zebra Kid jumps up straight away. Mark Belton face plants straight into the mat. Zebra Kid looks like he's got a nice body slam there. He could be... Oh, it looks like he's setting up for the Zebra Crossing, Tony. If he hits this, Zebra Kid's leaving Botsborn Civic Hall with the All England title. And down! No, Nick, he missed it. He missed his signature elbow. Mark Belton has been watching the tapes he remembers from the last match. This is where Zebra is effective. But Mark Belton rolled out of the way. A nice leg drop there as he picks up the kid. The missing of the elbow could have caused his elbow to explode. And now, five-star Mark Belton's keeping the advantage. Two no, and a three. No, he managed to get the arm up there. Zebra Kid is not going to let go of his title, Nick, that easy. Mark Bell is in control for the minute, but will he stay that way long? Another nice body slam there from Five Star. Could be one of these vicious, vicious kicks that finally knocks out Zebra Kid and ends his dream reign as the all England champion, but Zebra Kid crotches. Five Star Mark Belton. Belton is in trouble again. This is like the third time Zebra Kid has gone for that one area, Nick, but with a vicious slap on the top rope. And there's now Mark Belton. He's trying to fight back, but I just, I gotta believe that the Zebra Kid has the advantage here. Mark Belton is perched on the top rope, and Zebra Kid has now climbed there himself. I'm not entirely sure what this is, Nick. But I think I know Kid what it is. Oh, my God, Nick! The top rope DDT! I called it earlier, but it was a super place, but this time he hit it. And now, I think we're going to see the Zebra crossing, Tony. The Zebra Kid is on top. He flies down. No! And he has the Zebra crossing. One, two, three. Good night, Irene. The Zebra Kid is still the champ. That is all that is written. The Zebra Kid is going to walk out of the Bloodsport Civic Hall. Still all England champion, but Tony, what a brave effort by the challenger, five-star Mark Belton. It's true, Nick, you have to give props to Mark Belton. He came in tonight, a virtual unknown, but people are going to be leaving Brooksport tonight talking about this match, talking about this match for a long time, if you ask me. A lot of the fans are from Norwich here, it seems, tonight. You've got to believe that the Zebra Kid is going to go backstage happy, because he made his fans happy. What a hell of a contest, Tony. But you see what I mean when I said it was stiff. My lord, those blows are sickening. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, it's a match that I've really been looking forward to because the XPW European Heavyweight title is on the line. That's right, Nick. We're going to see former ECW legend, Super Crazy. Uh, Tony, Tony, check me out.
www.frontierwrestling.com Our next match will be fought under XPW rules. Top match 
here tonight at Rockbourne Civic Hall because Johnny Storm is something that a man like Jody Fleisch isn't and that is a main eventer, a top tier caliber athlete. He is the one and the only. Tony, how can you disagree with me? He is an awesome specimen. He defeated the new effing show, Jerry Lynn, to become the XQW European Heavyweight Champion. And he's held that belt since. We recently had the British Breakout Tour, and he left it with the title still intact. Well, you know, Nick, I won't disagree with you there. Johnny Storm is an amazing wrestler. What he does inside the square circle is bar none fantastic. But if Johnny Storm's habits and person, Johnny Storm's behavior outside the ring, let me say, Johnny Storm was firmly behind all of his fans, but he turned his back all of them, and it was all through the jealousy of Jody Fly. Super Crazy himself, former ECW television champion. Super Crazy was known for his battles in ECW against Yoshihiro Tajiri. I know tonight that Johnny Storm isn't somebody he should take lightly. I'm sure we're going to see a fantastic European title match. Super Crazy now flipping into the ring. There's no doubt he's a phenomenal athlete. But he's nothing compared to Johnny Storm, Tony. I mean, Johnny Storm has the most coveted title in Europe today. You know, Nick, you do say one thing about Johnny Storm having a European title and it is being a coveted title. Well, Nick, I'm going to agree with you 100%. But one thing I have to ask you is, where is Just Storm's belt? All the fans have asked it, and I'm asking it as well. To me, Johnny Storm is a European champion in name only. Hey, hey, Tony, come on. Back up a little bit. That's a little harsh. If you ask me, the XPW European title is so prestigious, you don't need a belt. I mean, why give a belt to Johnny Storm when he's never, ever going to lose it? Well, that is one way of looking at it, Nick. As you can hear there, Nick, um, it seems as though the fans are questioning Johnny Storm's sexual preference, but I'm not going to get into that right now. One thing I'm going to get into, though, is this match is fought under XPW rules. Basically, what that means is, Nick, they're a touch more lenient. And knowing Johnny Storm's like for jumping off furniture, tables, ladders and chairs, it's all going to be allowed tonight. I think it's a crying shame when Johnny Storm has to be dragged down to these barbaric contests, especially in front of 400-plus homophobic fans. What is it with them all, Tony? I mean, they're so discriminating. Johnny Storm's such an upstanding... Hey, 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 hey. Super crazy, don't even think of touching their hair. That hair is worth more than anything you own. Well, Nick, it looks as though we're about to get out of the way, but Johnny Storm, as per usual, is pissing and moaning before the match. All we want to do is get the match started, and all I want to do is see Super Crazy whoop Johnny Storm from one side of the building to the other. Is that too much to ask? And they lock up, and Johnny Storm with flashy headlocks. Oh, and there he goes. He takes him down, and he floats over, and that's his way of telling Crazy, I'm the man in the F. WA. You know, Nick, it was a lovely drop toe hold drop down and then, you know, showing a little bit of cocky attitude to Super Crazy. But you can bet your bottom dollar Super Crazy's gonna be right back. Well, we'll see. If you ask me, Johnny Storm can fly with the best of them. And there's no doubt that the insane Luchador can fly. Oh, and there he goes. He takes the leg down and he's going for some sort of Mexican hold. And, oh, bloody hell. Look at that, Nick. Straight away into an ankle lock, but Johnny Storm is too close to the ropes for it to be effective straight away. He is going to have to break that count by the five, and he does, Nick. Yeah, I saw what you were about to say, but he did break the hole. Oh, come on, I know XPW are lenient with the rules, but that is a bottom rope he's holding there, Tony. When you hold that rope, you break it. And now Johnny is peeved, and now it's the insane luchador with the advantage. He's got the headlock there, as Johnny Storm sends him off into the ropes. Shoulder block from Super Crazy. Johnny Storm with the sleep, Super Crazy over. And there we go, Johnny Storm and the insane Luchador exchanging fly maneuvers. Johnny went for the, oh, Hurricanrana, but he got flipped off. And now a tilt to our into a backbreaker. Absolutely fantastic. That's the kind of action we like to see here. Johnny Storm up over again with a tilt to take Super Crazy over the Mexican arm drag. The arm drag was art, and now Springborn crossbody, and oh wait, Luchador 
Oh, he, he grabbed the hair and he managed to get the pinfall. As he goes in with the Mahesh Rao Cradle and a two count again for Johnny Storm as both men stand up. Double drop kick from both men. Super crazy up and it's just a stare down. See, I told you, whatever the insane Luchador can bring, oh! he can beat it. And there's my way of showing it. Super kick to the face of Super Crazy. And now the insane Luchador is going to be seconds away from losing to Johnny. You know what, Nick? I'm not... Entirely, well, I'm not at all shocked at the behavior of Johnny Storm. After that little sequence, straight away, Johnny Storm disrespects Super Crazy. Super Crazy to the outside, he rolls straight back into the ring. Oh, what an awesome spinning heel kick takes Johnny Storm down. What a cowardly spinning heel kick there from the insane Luchador. Super Crazy whips Johnny off the ropes. Johnny off the ropes. Oh, sons of flip, that's the other way. Oh, nice basement drop kick there on Super Crazy. Super crazy there, rolled out of the sunset flip. That would have been it for sure. I mean, it's Johnny Storm, but he kicked him clean in the face. And now Johnny Storm, the poor Johnny Storm, he could be victim to some dangerous, stupid maneuver. Oh, oh, Nick! Oh, as the fans were applauding super crazy efforts, Johnny Storm managed to get up behind his back and managed to push him off. Johnny Storm now up on the top rope, Nick. I, I not usually seen. Oh, my word! Johnny can fly! That's for sure, and he's just wiped out that Mexican fool, damn it. You know, Nick, as much as I do, well, dislike Johnny Storm, he can pull out all the stops when it comes to being in the squared circle. A picture-perfect moonsault from the top rope to the outside of the ring, and now he's battering super crazy, smacking him up against side the guardrail. Johnny Storm back inside the ring, asking for the fans, fans, sorry, fans' appreciation, but they just won't give it to him. These fans are a bunch of ungrateful sods, quite frankly. Johnny Storm is in control. In St. Luchador, he's getting back into the ring. He won't get out of that. Oh, and a clothesline by Super Crazy. Super Crazy. Springs on. Oh! oh ball over a second rope moves over there. Two. Deep. No! No, Johnny Storm just managed to kick out. A legal use of the sp of the ropes there, Tony. Springboard onto him. That should have been the end of a contest, quite frankly. And now look at him again. He's going to the top. That's illegal, Tony, and you know it. Super Crazy up on the top rope with a nice missile drop kick, taking Johnny Storm outside of the ring. It looks as though the advantage has swung back into the favour of Super Crazy as he manages to fall over the top rope. Oh, and back inside. Oh! Over the lovely basement drop kick again on Johnny Storm and an up and over, but Johnny Storm managing to move out of the way just enough to drive Crazy down into the mat. Johnny Storm with a Greco-Roman sidestep and Super Crazy went down on the mat. I'm loving this contest, Tony. Oh, and Johnny Storm, he's going to crotch him on the railing. Dick, I know this is an XPW rules match, but that is just not cool for. Why would Johnny Storm do that? Super crazy, crotched on the guardrail. The fans are getting their money's worth right here, right now. What can Johnny Storm's plan be? Oh, you know what? Super crazy wants to be extreme. Well, Johnny's going to be extreme. That's what he's planning. And there he is, smashing his head into the railing, asking the fans. Fans don't know what they're talking about. Look at the blatant disregard, Johnny. Johnny Storm is just tearing up the outside. He's using chairs, he's using the guardrail, showing no respect to Super Crazy what's all. You would think that his title meant something to him and he'd want to defend it the right way, Nick. But no, no, this is Johnny Storm. Tony, Tony, I saw Super Crazy with chair and I'm like, oh! You saw him with chair and I loved it. Basically, it was the smash mouth driving the chair right into Johnny Storm's head. Johnny down and out on the mat. Tony, you are so biased. I mean, you hate it when Johnny Storm's in control on the outside. Oh, no, but when your favourite super crazy has got in control, oh, you love it and you sicken me. You call yourself a commentator. This is dirty shenanigans all the way. Oh, an awesome corkscrew elbow there. Nick, I just want to see a good match. The super crazy, I thought he would have gone for a pinfall there, but he had other ideas. Sends Johnny off into the ropes, clothesline takes. Storm down. That looked like a chop in the throat. I think that was another opportunity for a disqualification there, Tony. Johnny Storm is down, and he's pulling it by the hair, Tony. What kind of man is this? Nick, it's nothing that Johnny Storm wouldn't do. A super crazy up on the rope. Oh, my Lord, the fans in Broxbourne are actually educated. I didn't even know they could speak to Tex, count to ten, let alone in another language. Super Crazy with a signature ten count punch there, and the fans responding the way Super Crazy knows how in Spanish. Johnny Storm is down on the canvas at the moment, and Super Crazy is soaking up the adulation. Johnny Storm now, the courageous Johnny Storm, is fighting up. Can he dig deep to fight out? And there it is, Springboard, wheelbarrow, and... Oh! 
nice move from Johnny Storm there. Vaults off the second rope straight into the DDT. And he's down. And this will be the free count. Tony. One, two, and a three. When a kick out from Super Crazy. That was a, that was a three, Tony, surely. No, Nick, it was a two. As you can see, by the way, that the match is still going on and it's not finished. What is it with Linsky? That was a really, really slow count there from the rotund referee. And now, Johnny Storm, he's whipping Super Crazy off the ropes again. Catches him. Oh, lovely flat line, the time move. Pinfall, Sue. No, Super Crazy again with a shoulder up. Again, the momentum has swung Johnny Storm's weight. And I gotta admit, Nick, he is using a very good arsenal of moves to take out Super Crazy. But moves like that, we don't really need to see. That's another scar for the forehead of Super Crazy. You see, unlike Johnny Storm with his chiseled good looks, quite frankly, Super Crazy is one ugly son of a gun. Lovely headbutt there, Johnny now disfiguring Super Crazy. Body slam, and now he could be setting up for the end, the beginning of the end, Tony. You know, Rick, sorry that I was actually caught up in what the fans were chanting about Johnny Storm. I won't repeat it because this is a family show. But Johnny Storm is going up to the top rope, but Super Crazy has stirred and is up on his feet. And Super Crazy manages to catch Johnny Storm. Looked like he was going for a Gumrana. And Super Crazy sends him over. Oh, awesome, awesome. Tap out, Johnny. I can't believe it. He just dropped Johnny on his head, and now he's got his painful STF. But if I know Johnny with his heart as big as England itself, he will reach that road, Tony. I know he will. Maybe so, Nick. He is arching. He is moving his way closer and closer to the road. Super Crazy is going to have to break the hold now, Nick. But he was really wrenching back there. It looks as though Crazy may have done some permanent damage. Tell me, Tony, do you want Super Crazy to win this contest? You know, Nick, I'm an unbiased man at the moment. I don't really care. Ah, oh, that's such a weak answer. You know it. You're just not a patriot. I want the British man to win this contest. Oh, is... oh, 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 Tony, what's this? Nick, sorry, Nick, this is a Mexican surfboard done the right way as Johnny Storm is being rolled around the ring. Nick, the hyperextension in Johnny Storm's knees must be killing him. There is no way in the world I would love to be caught in this move. Johnny Storm is going to want to tap out very soon. Ah, oh, Tony, look at that. Are you sure that's not illegal? That looks like a joke to me. I'm pretty sure, Nick, he's just wrenching back. He's just wrenching back on Johnny Storm's head and neck. Basically continuing with the STF move that he did earlier. He did break the hold though. Looks like he may have another idea. Looks like he was trying to pull the spine out of Johnny Storm and perhaps use it as a toothpick afterwards. I gotta tell you, I'm not sure I like this guy. He's been drinking too much of the Mexican tap water, if you ask me. As Johnny Storm is down, still down on the mat. He's not being as cocky and he's not showing as much bravado at the moment. Oh, super crazy with a nice chop there. Johnny Storm just literally bouncing off the ropes. Oh, and a headbutt takes Storm down to the mat. What bullish tactics from this Mexican. I'm, I'm horrified. This is gruesome. This is horrifying and it's disgusting, Tony. I don't know if I can watch anymore. Well, you know, Nick, you don't have to watch, but I'm going to. As Super Crazy still in charge, picks up Johnny Storm and sends him off the ropes. Johnny Storm manages reversal. New reversal. He goes for the roll. Johnny's got him. One, two, no. A reversal. Johnny again. Oh, and Johnny's got another cover. A two One, now. two, One. no. Both men managed to spring up and Super Crazy now. Looks like he was going for a backslide. Johnny Storm up into the Hurricane Runner position, but Super Crazy managed to hang on. No, Super Crazy isn't, and it's Johnny Storm. Oh, pinfalls coming all over the place here. Johnny Storm boots to the face, and there he goes. Another pinfall. One, two. Oh, Super Crazy on top now. Super Crazy with a roll through, but Johnny Storm. Super Crazy does have hold of uh, Johnny Storm's head. The referee is going to need to check on that, but Johnny Storm is up, and so is Super Crazy. Both men caught. Same idea in mid-air collision, both men are down. That was a horrendous foot in the middle of the air there, Tony. Both men are down. If both men stay down, Johnny Storm is walking out, still the XPW European champion. Obviously, title change cannot change hands on the draw. But you've got to believe that Johnny will want to satisfy his friends and family, that you know he's got some fans, Tony. He wants to walk out with the title. It's true, Nick. Referee Steve Linskin administering the 10 count, but as both men slowly make it to their feet, Johnny Storm is up first. Johnny Storm now runs into the corner for Super Crazy. Rewind, we're right, and there he goes. He's hit one, it. one two, no, Super Crazy. Super Crazy managed to kick out Nick. Look at Johnny Storm's face. That balls and you know it, Tony. The Super Rewind Hurricanrana. That should have been it. And there, a 
Oh, spear into the corner and Super Crazy now. It can't be long now. Super Crazy must be on his last legs. Johnny Storm took him in there. Super Crazy managed to pull up onto his head. One, two, no! Johnny Storm managed to kick out there from the sunset flip. Both going with the same idea. Oh, crashing down. One, two, no! Super Crazy still not out. Johnny hits the storming driver, but Super Crazy kicked out of that as well. I mean, Johnny's thrown all his big moves at Super Crazy, and he's still out. Oh, oh, Nick! Bloody hell! That was like a driving drop kick. And One, no, what, no. no. Super Crazy! Super Crazy's not done, Nick. He's got plans for Johnny Storm. Let's go for some sort of sit down. Oh, there we go. One. Kick out, Johnny. Kick out. No. No, Johnny Storm just managed to kick out. That's crazy finisher. The spinning power bomb. Sit out, power bomb. Excuse me. He, he just managed to kick out. Nick, I'm, I'm stunned. Uh, you're stunned. I'm bloody stunned too. Ducks the close line. Super Crazy goes on power. Oh, Nick. Johnny Storm there. No. no. Two. no. He got it. No. Yes. Nick, Johnny yes. On the second row, Johnny Storm with the ropes as leverage to keep that belt. Nick, I'm disgusted, Nick. Johnny, what are you talking about? I mean, I'll be honest with you. I got something in my eye. I think I blinked and missed it. All I know is I heard a sound of a, of a hand hitting the canvas three times. And next thing I know, Johnny Storm's music playing. He's still the XPW European heavyweight champion, Tony. <laughs> well, Nick, you can laugh what you want. You may have something in your eye. Nick, Johnny Storm has robbed the fans. Listen to the fans. I agree with the fans. Johnny Storm did not give them the match they deserve. By right, super crazy Johnny Storm should still be going on. Yeah, I'm listening to the fans, and if you ask me, the security ought to kick them all out of here. You shouldn't be swearing in a public place like this. And watch Johnny's letting... What is Johnny Storm's blatant disregard for FWA personnel all about? Oh, he was merely... You know, he was merely wrong. Johnny Storm has a chip on his shoulder, Nick. A chip on his shoulder? Oh, come on, he's the XPW. European heavyweight champion. That's what's on his shot. Well, it's not actually on his shoulder, but that's what he is, Tony. Fair enough, Nick. Fair enough. Whatever. Super crazy. Showing the appreciation to the fans that gave it back to him during the match. What can you say, Johnny Storm? How about I have to cheat to win matches? That would do very well for me. Come on, it was XPW rules, Tony. Anything was gonna happen, and it did. FWA Home Video presents Jody Fleisch, Johnny Storm, Doug Williams, and the phenomenal AJ Styles in a round robin tournament. Seasons beatings. Go to www.frontierwrestling.com. Tony, I don't know if you know this, but when the family came out, I swear Jay Giles had a look that could only be described as <laughs> nervous, quite frankly. The family, the FWA Tag Team Champions, they're coming out to defend it in a very hard, big first for us, Tony. It's going to be a first blood match. Tag titles on the line. Both members of the team must be bleeding for them to lose. And the question is, who's going to walk out of here with the Tag Team Championships? Tony, I'm not sure who the thing's going to win, because you've got the family, this scary, sinister, twisted team. But then you've got the, the raw power of Alex Shane and Old Herman. This is a war that has just spiralled out of control. It's true, Nick. This will be won for the record books. The newest member of the family, Ash, formerly of the New Breed, shocked the FWA fans when he joined the family at Crunch uh, earlier on in this year. And as I stand on a look at the family, Nick, all I've got to say is there are more sellouts in that team than Barbara Streisand on Broadway. Right, on a second, Tony, I mean, it's a... Big grey area, but maybe you should be quiet because things can happen.
punching away at... Oh, Ulf Herman brings off the rope neck with a shoulder barge, but Ulf Herman does not move a muscle once again. The damage he's just inflicting on himself here. Oh, smartly goes through the legs of Ulf Herman. And to the gut there, bends Herman over. Paul Chevelle taking him into the corner, laying those forearms right into the chest area of Ulf Herman. He whips Herman, and he's going through. Herman with a boot, but Travell ducks it. Oh! Murray, and he got folded like an accordion. Paul Travell, oh, one well, for you, Mr. Parker, as well. Paul Travell thought, ha, ha, I ducked, I did the right thing. Ulf Herman asses back with sheer power and aggression. Parker probably shouldn't have gotten in the ring when he lacks in intelligence, though. you got to believe he more than makes up for in gut. And that's... Oh my Ulf Herman is keeping Scott Parker in the air for as long as humanly possible. My, Nick, are you timing this? That's just to be like 10, 15 seconds. The lovely delayed vertical suplex. Scott Parker looks as though he may be out of it already. He's picking up Parker by the scruff of the neck now. And now he's, he's setting him up for another suplex, maybe. Wait, oh no, Tony, he's going even higher he's up. set him up on the top rope, Nick. This can't be a good thing for Scott Parker, although Scott Parker is trying to fight back. Manages to knock Herman away as Alex Shane runs into the ring. And, oh my word, Nick! Alex Shane with the Shane Station whacking Scott Parker out, taking him down to the entrance way. Well, I'd say that was an illegal love uh, coming into the ring, but oh, Travell out of nowhere, wiping out the show stealer. Obviously, I don't think, since it's no EQ, I don't think tags are actually that essential. And, oh, 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 the German oh, can fly! A oh, flying German, Nick, now I have seen everything. Paul Travell will prove that you do not turn your back on him because he will jump out from everywhere. But Ulf Herman proving he can do it just as well, and it looks as though the German has found some of his favourite toys. I cannot believe it. Oh, we saw a plunger, a keyboard, some sort of chalkboard. I mean, anything Ulf Herman can get his mitts on. Oh! Body slam on the outside. Anything Herman can get his mitts on, he's going to use to devastate an effect. And that, not surprised, he's got to draw blood from his opponents tonight. Oh, Nick, it looks as though Alex Shane just reached under the ring and grabbed John Atkins out, our timekeeper's lunch, and just spat it all over Paul Treville. There is no respect, there is no love loss here. Parker, I will not give up your day job. There is no way you're going to rock Ulf Herman off his feet. But Ulf Herman's allowing him another opportunity. Parker's got to knock him out! And well, Nick, no. there is no effect on Ulf Herman. A boot to the gut there on Scott Parker and bang! There you go. Scott Parker is down on and Oh, Nick, did you see that? In the bottom right hand of the screen, referee Andrew Coyne just got taken out as well. Ulf Herman ought to be fined twice there. One for swearing in writing, the other for assaulting the referee. It just goes to show when you put a weapon in the hands of Ulf Herman, no man is safe. Alex now, Shane looked like he may be setting up. Is he going to go for the one night stand, Nick, on the stage? No, Paul Travell needs to land on his feet. A kick to the gut of Alex Shane and oh! A shake, crackle, and roll neck breaker there. Did you hear Alex Shane back connect with the floor as Scott Parker is almost sent flying through the ropes? Old Herman looks to be looking around, maybe for his next toy. I mean, as you saw earlier, Paul Travell managed to smack Alex Shane, but not before Alex Shane was threatening to use the one night stand on the stage. We've seen Alex Shane jump off a ramp. Oh, Paul Travell with a Paul Travell with a devastating hurricanrana from the stage, taking Shane to the floor on the outside. But Ulf Herman is back in the ring, and Ulf Herman is a broomstick neck. Oh, my word. Ulf Herman is a dangerous man. At Frontiers of Honor, we saw Scott Parker get brutalized by Ulf Herman. I mean, it looks like the trend will continue here tonight in the Brockbourne Civic Hall of Vendor. Oh, Travell's busted open, Tony! No, it's not Travell, Nick. Sorry to cut you off. It's Scott Parker. I saw the truth there, trying to put his, his notepad, his journalistic book what in front of Scott please, Parker's face. Please. But I can hear Jane Child announce that Scott Parker is bleeding. But Nick, I've seen Paul Travell, and he's holding a cheese grater, Nick, of all things a cheese grater. It's 1-0 at the moment, but if Travell has his way, it's going to be 1-0, and he seems to be taking it to the show stealer. Nick, can you hear that? I can hear the scream of Alex Tony, Shane. Tony, what's he doing? Making a guard now? There, he just put a, a gnome in between the legs of... Oh, Nick, uh, Nick, oh, Alex, oh, Shane. Oh. Alex Shane has been busted open. As soon as Scott Parker got busted open, the family have reiterated straight away. Paul Travell there with the cheese grater, but shut. Oh, my what? Nick! What do you, Nick, what do you say to that? Nick, that is Ulf Herman's answer to family planning. Oh my lord, Tony! I didn't know Ulf 
Herman likes his gardening, but it looks like Travell, DDT on the outside, but oh, Shane crotches him. Paul Travell was going for that DDT, Nick, and if you remember the last show of Frontiers of Honor, you remember Alex Shane took that spinning DDT from the top of the entranceway, wiped him out completely. Alex Shane must... I don't know if he does have any problems with his neck, but sure as hell, Paul Travell is going to be targeting one area. Jane, Jane Childs, as usual, on top of the action, has just announced that officially Alex Shane is busted open. We are one. Oh, oh my word, Nick! That was a broom, and it's broken in half. Swine Almighty! What is he doing to Parker? Parker's getting brutalized in that bin, like he's Oscar from Sesame Street or something. And now Alex oh, Shane grabbing oh, a weapon. No. There, it looks as though it says all fist good, and he is. An Paul Travell doesn't want it. I felt that, that's for sure. And now Alex Shane, he's, he's dragging Travell down to the floor. The fans getting a very close-up view of the action. It, and it looks like he's dragging him out of nostrils. Exactly sorry. what I was going to say, Nick. It looks as though Alex Shane is dragging Paul Travell along by his nostrils. It looks as though Alex Shane just wants to, as you said before, brutalise Paul Travell from the family as they're fighting up in the stands. Ulf Herman oh, down. Oh, Tony, Tony, I'll oh. cut you off with a power driver by Ulf Herman. That'll be yet another fine for Ulf Herman. I'm, I'm not gone. sure about the Knicks. It is a DQ match. Paul Travell trying to go for that DDT. But Alex Shane manages to reverse it into an atomic drop. Oh no, Alex Shane just told the fans to move. The wall is bare. Travell hits the wall. Ducks the clothesline. He's got the Russian legs. Paul Travell is trying for it, Nick, but Alex Shane is holding on with all his might as he sends Paul Travell in. Looks like he's going for the checkup from the neck up, Nick. However, oh, Travell swept over. And there we go, the Russian legs. Oh, oh, Nick! Nick! A Russian leg sweep on the wall. Oh my. Nick, his head just bounced off of the brick wall. It's Nick like of Herman is conversing there with Scott Parker. Parker looks like he's gone. Alex Shane is bleeding. Scott Parker is bleeding. If Paul Travell or Ulf Herman start bleeding, this match will be over. And what, what's Ulf doing now? Ulf oh. Herman setting up a tray and just laying it to Scott Parker's head. This is completely unnecessary, Tony. Parker's already... Oh, Travell now hit the post and he looks like he might have injured his arm there. Uh, Alex Shane now has got Travell. Uh, uh, what's he doing here? Looks like he's setting him up for something. He's got a boot. Oh, Nick! Nick, Alex Shane just inadvertently took out a member of security. Paul Travell managed to duck out of the way. Oh, Nick! Vicious! A super kick there, taking out Paul Travell. That was bleeding clean kick there from Alex Shane. But it looks like Ulf Herman in the rings taking out the trash. Putting Scott Parker in another bin. Uh, it looks as though the security member is down. I mean, forget about it. It's a bad thing that it's happened. But in a match like this, you have to expect accidents to happen. Ulf Herman is still laying the boots to Paul Travell. And Alex Shane is just laying waste to Paul Travell on the outside of the ring. Casualties are piling up indeed. And... Oh, Alex Shane's got one of the spare boards from out underneath the ring. That, that's a ring board. That, that's, that's what they use under the ring, Nick, to, to hold the ring up, isn't it? There, there's no... Oh, what's he I hope he's not going to try and put someone through. There is no way you can get a man through that. I mean, that's used to taking 600-plus pound men doing jumping salts onto it, but... You're right, oh, Nick. No. It's, I have no idea what Alex Shane have, has in mind here. But whatever it is, it cannot be good for Paul Travell. We know that Alex Shane is very much capable of driving people from high points. And it looks like he's going to go for the one-night stand through the table. He's getting Travell on his shoulders. He's got him up, Nick. This is just, I swear to, uh, to, I swear to God, this will be it. But Paul Travell just managed to rake the eyes there of Alex Shane. And he lays a blow into the back of the head. Travell managed to swung. escape now. And, oh, 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 you're not supposed to go through them as referee Andrew Coyne is checking on Alex Shane. Both men are down. That has to be it for Alex Shane. That has to be it. Old Herman, meanwhile, is just brutalizing Scott Parker some more. I don't know how necessary this is. Scott Parker is bleeding. It might be wise to go after Travell. But this war is so personal. Maybe Ulf is blinded to this fact. Maybe Ulf just wants to cause pain and suffering to the members of the family. Greg Lambert there showing concern for his fellow stablemate. Ulf Herman does have the chair, though. Nick looks like he's going to lay waste to Paul Travell. He goes for the chair, but Paul Travell pulls referee Andrew Coyne in the way. The referee has been taken out as well now. Oh, Travell went for the Van Daminator, but he actually missed it. Ulf Herman up trying to lay the boots in, but no! Paul Travell managed to get the drop kick while Ulf Herman was down on the floor. He is one sneaky character. Paul Travell managed to wrestle the chair from out of Ulf Herman. Ulf, Ulf Herman, they're already starting to get up, but it looks like 
It looks like Andrew Coyne. Yeah, Nick, it looks as though Paul Travell is trying to wake referee Andrew Coyne up. Maybe Old Herman's busted open, and that's what Paul Travell's trying to find out. Oh, Nick. Do you think Paul Herman ever went to typing class? I don't know, but all I know is that uh, that keyboard won't be surfing any webs for a while. He just destroyed it over there. Whoa, Jamal, did you see that? Turn? Nick, I can see as well. Paul Travell is busted open. Th this is it. But the, the referee is busted open as well. But the they're taking the referee out of the match. The, no one, no one, there's no one here to see, see Travell busted. Paul Travell's busted open. The, the family, the family are out, Nick. Alex Jane and North Herman should be the tag champs as of right now. Well, well, there's no referee down here at the moment. But, oh, there's referee Steve Linsky. If Wolf Herman can get Linsky to look at Paul Travell, see the blood. Wolf Herman's walking out with the tag team titles along with Alex Shane. As you can, referee, uh, the, Wolf Herman's trying to argue with the referee, but Steve Linsky's saying, well, it's not my match. Well, all Wolf Herman needs to do is get in, show Paul Travell, and the match is over. Oh, come on, Tony, do you want to be a part of an Wolf Herman match? Everyone around them is falling and dropping like flies. Wolf Herman picking up Paul Travell, but Nick, wait, Nick, that's not... That's him, 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 that's Greg Lambert, he's asking for silence, but he's snarling. Nick, he's got the decanter we presented with earlier. And Raj Ghost, Raj Ghost comes into the ring. He's saying the decanter. This is, yeah, Good that's boy. right. He's going to save the decanter. He's going to knock Greg Lambert and give him what for, if you ask me, Nick. He's going to knock him out. Of no! I don't know why he just turned around and smack all Herman. What's he doing? Raj Ghost turned the family down earlier on. What, what could he be thinking right now? What, what, is, what is he doing, Nick? I, I don't know. I mean, there's so much confusion going on. But wait, Greg Lambert's pointing to me. Oh, but that's the referee's called it. The referee's rang the bell. Surely not. I think Old Herman might be bleeding. No, Nick, the family have managed to weasel their way out of another title match. You say weasel, but if you ask me, it was bloody sly. I mean, come on, Tony. They did the old switcheroonie with Travell and Ian Disciple. And they managed to win. They beat all the odds. I mean, no, I, mean, I, I oh. can't believe this. I'm, I'm lost for words, Nick. I cannot. Alex Shane and Paul Herman should be FWA Tag Team Champions. Two members well, of well, the Tony, Tony, we got a replay up from the truck, and it looks like there you see the there switch. There you see the switch, and Ian Disciple coming into the ring, and you can see, look at the look on Mars Ghosh's face. He is focused, Nick. As you heard him say, Greg the Tree Plumber telling um, Raj Ghost he will be a superstar, and Alex Shane pointing at the cold, staring eyes of Raj Ghost. You gotta believe that this war is is far from over, Tony. It's just spiraling more out of control. Champion. 
and the winners of tonight's matches will meet on a future FWA show in September to decide the number one contender to the title, which is currently held by Doug Williams. James Ty, the man who I consider to be the first son of the FWA. He was trained in the FWA Academy under the tutelage of Mark Sloan. And finally, James Ty managed to escape the shadow of his mentor. And since then, his star is rapidly rising. And what an opportunity he has, a number one contendership tournament. He's got to get through Jody Flystone. And that is one hell of a hard prospect. Here he comes, Nick Former, two-time FWA champion. Now he's going to want to be looking at seeing James Tight as only another victory tonight. He wants to get back in that title hunt and being the number one contender, he'll do exactly that. Well, don't forget, Tony, Jody cannot be mentally prepared for this contest. Johnny Storm can play major mind games with him as of late. That's true, Nick. After what happened at Frontiers of Honor, where Johnny Storm screwed Jody Flash out of the final victory, Maybe he's not 100% focused on this match. The only way to find out is to watch. Well, this is going to be a fantastic contest. Both men very technically sound. James Ty a little bigger than Jody, but you've got to believe that Jody will have that speed and agility advantage. And that saves him when you consider how quick and agile James Ty is himself. It's true, Nick, and I'm quite psyched about this one because it is the very first time. And straight away off with the action, James Ty with the waist lock, and now Jody just wrestling back and forth. James with the front face lock, Jody trying to get out of this straightaway, but James straight back in with the front face lock, Jody now with the hammerlock. They just keep flowing each other, and now Jody Flash has got that hammerlock. James James desperately looking for an escape and he brings him down and switches into a waist lock. That was fantastic. Jody now swings around, waist lock his own, jumps over James Ty, flips around. He's got the ankle. James, however, rolls through off the ropes. Jody now, oh, but James with a roll for Jody reverses. One, two, James with a pin for himself. One, two, and both men are up straight away, Nick. Look at this, look at this. I mean, come on, this is bringing out the best out of both men, Tony. Both men move for move, Nick. It's really hard to choose at the minute. It was just move back and forth. Everything one can do, the other was doing at the same time. You know what? I'm surprised he's been able to keep up Jody so far, but James is a hungry line here tonight. The number one contendership to the FWA title is on the line. And it looks like a fight for control of an overhead wrist lock here. And James wins it. He's got the headlock. James puts it back in the headlock. Nick, do you think James's power will be better, will, will gain him a victory over Jody, or will it be Jody's quickness that will gain him a victory over James's size? Well, I've got some bad news for James Ty. I mean, Jody has faced bigger and stronger men. So oh, so but Nick, to... up and over, straight away. That was superb. See, that was just an example of Jody's agility and technique. Um, combining to make this beautiful harmony that makes him such a wonderful wrestler. And now, you've got to believe they're back at the starting blocks again. James Ty looking for this grapple. Here we go. They're feeling each other out at the moment, Nick. I mean, yeah, it's been completely 50-50 at the moment. James does have the power, Jody has the agility and the speed. You've got to believe, though, that James Ty is coming into this, believing in his heart that he can beat Jody. Otherwise, Jody will just psych him out. Jody Fleisch is a big match winner, Tony. Do not forget that. He won British Uprising. He won the main event to become the FWA Heavyweight Champion. James Ty might not be used to that pressure. And there's the pinfall. But Jody's managing to get the shoulder up. And James is just trying to brute force him down. And Jody... 
flips through over the top, wrist lock of his own. Joey managed to slide out the back there. The strength of James Ty did prove a big factor there. He used the Roman knuckle lock and took Jody down from that for quite a while. Jody did escape it using his quickness, quickness, sorry, speed against strength. Jody's in charge at the moment. Land a few blows into the stomach and abdomen area there of James Ty. James Ty trying to nip out of it, but Jody Ty had a very vice-like grip on James Ty. Don't forget, Jody's got those phenomenally strong legs, so I'm not surprised that James had a lot of trouble getting out of them. It took him three attempts to actually kick out that hold. But now, here we go, a lock up again. James Ty with the arm, another wrist lock. Short on clothesline, but it was done. Jody went for clothesline, and he catches the kick and shot. And I do apologize, James is staggered off the ropes again. Oh, leap from with James caught him. Oh, to his feet again, whips again into the corner, springboards over, catches Jody. Jody drop kick. Jody with the drop kick there, up onto the top rope with the ease of a cat, and he moves towards over James Ty. A kick to the stomach there, Jody sending James off. James managed to reverse it. Jody reversal as well, same to James Ty into the into the top rope, but up and over, a picture perfect moonsault, much like Jody's, again with a reversal. James Ty off the ropes, Jody flush up with the leapfrog. Another leapfrog there, and Jody went for some kick, another kick. Jody with enough, but James, oh, there we go. One, two, kick out. The action is fast and furious here tonight, Tony. Another kick out, a bump and nip hop. Look at this standing ovation here tonight in the Brockbourne Civic Hall. And they deserve it, Nick. It has just been pure poetry in motion so far. The fans are well in appreciation and deservedly so. And look at this. Once again, they're back on the starting block. But you've got to believe the longer Jody Flash can keep this match going, the more it is an advantage it will be. Another lockup. And there you go. Jody with the headlock switches around into the waist lock. James Ty is going to try and break out of that. Out of that waist lock there, trying to bridge himself forward as he takes Jody with the wrist lock. And there we go. We'll just see basics here. And James is phenomenal at the basics. It's those basics that can bring you victory. Jody with a oh look at that beautiful leg sweep. And he's got a kind of a an Achilles lock, ankle lock type submission on. But there it is. Look at that variation of an STF nut. Fujiwara armbar. He's just using basically, we don't see many submission moves from Jody Flies. He's usually a high flyer. But in the ring against James Ty, he is adapting. James Ty is a formidable submissions wrestler, and Jody Fleisch is just adapting to that style. And in the moment, Nick is well in control. You do not want to underestimate Jody Fleisch's technical abilities. Remember, he learned those technical abilities of Dino Scarlo, who himself is a phenomenal technician. Jody is as complete a package as you're gonna get at his height and weight. James, James Ties now nips up, but Jody, there you go, just takes him back down to the mat. Advantage Jody. Sorry, Nick, that was the second time James Ty managed to vault up onto his feet. He thought, oh, I'll get out of this now, and Jody Flies sent me straight back down. This time, though, holding onto the ropes, manages to flip over. Jody Flies still holding onto the wrist, sends James off into the ropes. Looks like James escaped, but Jody was waiting for him. There he oh, oh, Nick, look well, at that. running straight into that abdominal stretch. That, that was awesome, Nick. I've never seen anything quite like it. James Ty putting the pressure on Jody Fleisch. He just caught the attempt at the hip toss and he's just forced Jody to that submission move. However, Jody finally hip tops this out of it. And Jody oh! Jody Fleisch using James Ty's own momentum that pushed him up in the air to leg drop James Ty. Jody Fleisch still in control. That was fantastic. Jody Fleisch is innovating. Nice snap man now, and Jody off the ropes, and oh, oh. kick to the face. Placement drop kick taking James down to the mat. Jody in for the pin, one, two, no, a kick out. A little bit too soon yet, if you ask me, Nick. Andrew Coyne, only the two count. I completely agree with you, just a little bit too soon at the moment. It's going to take something pretty special to take out these two men. And when I mean special, I'm talking about the formidable Titanic, or even the 720 DDT. Kick to the head, speaking of which, he might be setting up for it, but no. James managed to escape the predicament. Springboard, I uh, know, oh, maybe not. And oh, Nick, looks a lot of James Ty was maybe going for the assay moonsault. He's very good at using that move, but Jody Fleisch, obviously been watching his FWA tapes, manages to sweep the legs of James Ty away. Now, Jody Fleisch and James Hurt on the outside of the ring can be as devastating as they can be inside. Although Jody Fleisch has just rolled James Ty back into the ring, looks as though he's maybe going for a springboard move of some sort. Well, it looks like the 720, no, it was a drop kick. He could have been sent for the 720 DDT, but I think Jody realized that James was a little too far away from the ropes to even think about going for that move. And now, Jody is back in control. 
front headlock, and there's that basics we've been talking about. Jody Flies has got the pressure on James Ty. This will slow down James, and if you slow down James even more, the speed advantage of Jody Flies is going to be out, 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 just out of this world, Tony. I, I agree with you again, 100%, Nick. I mean, both of these guys are fan favourites, but it seems as though Jody may have one or two more fans. I don't know if you just caught it, but there's a guy sitting at ringside wearing a Dr. Chan mask. This is Jody Flies' mask when he wrestles over in Japan. I mean, these are fans that truly love what Jody does. Yes, I have seen the fan in question, but the thing is, is that you've got to remember with Jody, he's been all over the world. He's been in Japan, he's been in England, obviously. He's been in Europe. He knows every trick in the book. He's phenomenal, and it's going to be impossible for James to beat him. Oh! oh James Tyler with an awesome springboard elbow there, taking Jody Flash down. Jody Flash back up, but a couple of devastating clotheslines from James Ty. James Ty seems as though he's got his second win. A body slam takes Jody Flash down. Two, no, a kick out there from Jody. Flash. Several clotheslines followed by a very heavy body slam. I mean, James Ty is in control. And maybe, oh, and there he goes. He's going for a suplex. And he's holding him up there. Beautifully done. Look at the look at the structure of that. A very nice delayed suplex there. Oh, almost turned into a brain bust at the end from James Ty. For a minute there, Nick. I thought he was going to go for the Titanic. Only got the two, two count there. Sorry. If he'd have hit that Titanic, it would have been over, Nick, if you ask me. He truly dropped him from the heavens right there. And now James Ty is sucking the carcass dry. And there he is. He's picking him up. Off the ropes. Jody now rebounds. And oh, Moonsault drop kick as only James Ty can deliver. James Ty may be soaking up a little bit more of the adulation. He needs to be getting in those pins a little bit quicker. This is where the experience of Jody Fleisch will pay off. James Ty hasn't been in as many high-profile matches as Jody, but you can bet your bottom dollar from here on out, I bet he's going to. Well, absolutely, James Ty, very young, a huge future ahead of him. And look at those chops. He's desperate to get Jody off those ropes. Jody, however, rolls through, drops her ball onto the bottom rope. And he ducks the clothesline, and he's going for something. He's been caught, but it's goes a bulldog. Goes and hits it, dropping James straight into a bulldog. James Tyler almost instinctively has jumped straight back up to his feet. I'm not sure if that was a good idea. Oh, my word, Nick. Jody Flash with a standing moonsault drop kick. That was amazing! Yeah, it seems like, however, he might have landed a bit, yeah, a bit funny. I mean, both men are down. Jody's finally got to his feet, however. And now he's trying to pick up that heavy body of James. I mean, you can't pick him up dead weight. He's just too massive. Jody flies, sending James Ty off into the road. James Ty managed to reverse, and with an elbow into the corner. James, uh, James, sorry, Ty may be signaling for something, but Jody flies walks up onto the shoulders. And, oh, my word, Nick! He's hanging backwards over the rope. This is like a reverse tarantula. Look at the way the bodies are contorted. This is unbelievable. Looks like James might have been contorting Jody as well, but Jody got the better of it. I think James has just been stretched like a piece of raw dough, quite frankly. You can hear the fans, Nick. They're well showing their appreciation. I've never personally, in all my years of watching wrestling, seen a move done like that. And there we go, Jody 720 DDT. But wait, he missed it, and James will capitalize. Oh, look at that, he's going for it. Oh, what a. What Nick, a look at that, he's got him in a double cross chicken wing there. This has got to be excruciating. One single slip there from Jody Fleisch. Although James is holding on to him. Went from the double chicken wing, dropped him straight back into a German suplex. Advantage time, Nick. Freaking hell, he just caught him in German suplex and that's got oh, it! Oh no! Oh, Nick, that was so close. I almost thought it was all over for the Phoenix there. <laughs> Managed to get his arm up just at the last second. James Ty using some very innovative moves. Oh, and here it is, Tony, the formidable Ty. No, wait, no, not yet. He's got him round the, round the waist and there he goes. Whips him off again. Judy over the top right. Have 720 DDT. No, springboard cross body. It's got a pitfall. It's too tight. No, too. Oh, that was a very, very close that was like two and three eighths if you ask me nick jody obviously frustrated but now jody could be it looks like he might be going up top maybe tony he's signaling for something nick and it could be very dangerous outside oh my word looked like he was going for the maybe the hurricane runner james so i had the sense to turn it into the power bomb and both men are late to waste he went for it he managed to get his legs wrapped around the head of james ty but ty just power bombed him down and that could be enough no James Ty, Nick, I almost thought that was over then, but Jody Flash managed to get the arm up one last time. James Ty seems to be he's signaling for something, goes for the close on and misses. Both men hit heads and both men are down. 
You see, one thing James Ty is doing wrong, he's using the ropes a lot, and you don't want to get the match too quick, because the Jody Flash will get the advantage. As you quite clearly saw there, when James Ty went to throw Jody off the ropes, they both cracked heads and they're down. And now they're struggling to return into the ring. They are getting up and they look like they're almost doing it's like a mirror opposite of each other. Both men up onto the top. Oh! Up onto the top row. Both had the same idea at the same time. And both men now are on the outside of the ring, just on opposite sides this time. Nick, have you ever seen anything like what we're seeing? Not in the last week, Tony, no. I mean, I'm shocked. I mean, I'm seriously shell-shocked. I mean, both men, what the odds? Both men going for a desperation move. They realised in mid-air it wasn't going to work. Crash, bang, down on the ground, and the referee Andrew Coyne's going for a count-out. Now, as far as I'm aware, if there is a double count-out, then later on tonight, Jack Xavier versus Flash Barker will determine the number one contender, since this match won't have a win. But Jody is desperate to get back into the ring. Jody Flash trying to get back into the ring, but it, Nick, it's the, it's the fan of the double jar mask. Well, what's he doing? He's just... But what referee, referee, referee talking what's going to James Ty. What's going on? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I was a lifetime fan of Jody. What's going on? Referee Andrew Coyne is continuing the count on Jody. He, he's not seeing what happened. He's, he's still counting the count on... No! What? Nick, Nick the, the, the fan has cost Jody the match. What? I mean, where the hell is security during all of this, Tony? Nick, the, the fan managed to pull the guardrail, pull Jody down from the match. Referee Andrew Coyne was checking on James Ty. James Ty managed to get back in the ring carry on the count now for Jody, and Jody was still late to wait. James Ty has advanced in this match, but this man, this, whoever this masked man is, has cost Jody his rightful title shot tonight, basically, if you ask me. Well, well, obviously, the, I, I don't know, this was such a confusing situation. I mean, who the hell is it? I mean, the fan, well, I mean, he looks upset. Jody Flash is trying to explain to Andrew Point, like, someone pulled me down. Someone, I, I was back in the ring. Well, you've got to remember, the referee didn't see it. It doesn't count. Uh, what the bleeding hell's going on here? The masked man is just still standing there. Jody is looking on and... Nick! It's Nick oh, and Johnny Storm! Genius! Genius! Nick, how... how Jody Flash is obviously PO'd as I would... How did Johnny Storm manage to get back out into the crowd? Jody is pissed! And Johnny Storm... Oh, you are the man, Johnny! Johnny, continuing the rivalry has just cost Jody Flash his the opportunity. And I'll see Johnny Storm in your way. I don't know what will happen, but all I know is he wasn't out for a count of 20. Well, Nick, that's what we'd all like to see. We want to see this match carry on, Nick. Five more minutes to give the fans what they deserve. Come on, Tony, we both know it's not FD grade policy to continue matches. Gotta tell you, Tony, I don't think Jody's emotionally Three, stable. Two, Nick, I mean, James wants it, Jody wants it, the fans want it. It looks as though we're going to get the five more minutes. Andrew Coyne, referee Andrew Coyne doing the right thing there. Yeah, but wait one minute. Nick, oh. just 
fighting frontiers of honor. Steve Lisk yeah. is ruining the party for the fans here. We've seen this before, Nick. Referee Andrew Coyne ready to give the five more minutes. But referee Linsky comes down. Him being the official referee vetoes the whole decision. Yes, Steve Linsky head referee overpowers Andrew Coyne. Absolutely no question. It's exactly the same thing that happened during the Flash Barker low-key match from Frontiers of Honor. Referee Steve Linsky basically saying, if you guys touch each other, neither of you will win. The referees are arguing with each other now. I mean, James Ty, James Ty has his victory, he advances, but this isn't the way it was meant to be. Well, head referee Steve Linsky, he gets his will. The match will not continue, and whether you agree with it or not, James Ty will be going on to the finals. But who's going to be his opponent? It's either going to be Flash Barker or Jack Xavier, and that's coming up a little later on tonight. Tonight is the night that oversized Neanderthal Birchall finally gets what's coming to him. Because as always, I have a master plan and I have something up my sleeve that can ensure me victory. Tonight is the night that I prove to you and everyone here once and for all that I am better than Birchall. I have a better mind than Birchall, I have a better body than Birchall, and I am a better wrestler than Birchall. And I will prove to you and everyone in this building that I am a class apart. Now, Tony, this is a man who has all the momentum of a runaway diesel truck. This man at the last big event, Frontiers of Honor, bested the Triple Crown ECW winner, Mikey Whitwreck. Now, we've already seen one young line in the form of Jane Ty make it to the finals. Are we going to see another in Jack Xavier go all the way? Nick, in the FWA, anything is possible. Here he comes Nick, former FWA champion, Flash Barker. Now, as you said before, Jack Xavier, fresh from his victory over the ECW legend, Mikey Whipwreck. Flash Barker didn't fare so well. During his match with Low Key, the match went the full distance of his time limit. And as they were asking for five more minutes, referee Steve Linsky came out, vetoed the decision, said there would be no more five minutes for this match, and that thus there was never a decisive winner. Now, going into this match, it would appear to me that maybe Flash will have some built-up aggression. The question is, will he take it out on Jack Xavier, or will he just let it lie? You think he's got some built-up aggression? This is a man who's walking aggression. I mean, come on, of course he's going to take it out on Jack Xavier. Flash Barker, look at him, he's like a Sherman tank, and he's eyeing up Jack for dinner. It's true, Nick. Flash Barker is an awesome specimen. He's a very, very big man, one of the biggest on the FWA roster. And looking at Jack Xavier, he might have a few ideas how he's going to break him down. But one thing you can guarantee, this is going to be an awesome match. Well, Jack Xavier's a creative young man from Birmingham. I reckon he might come with some cold blood here. He might come with some creative ways to take down this monster, Flash Barker. But did you just see that punch to the gut? I did see that punch, Nick. But as you can see, with Flash Barker wearing those, uh, wearing those fight gloves the way he does, it's hard to tell which is open-fisted and which is closed. I mean, you can see referee Steve Linsky's arm asking Flash, was it open, was it closed? I believe Flash being the, the, the competitor that he is, they were open-fisted. He would do things the right way. All he wants to do is win this match, become the number one contender, and win back the FWA heavyweight title. Well, referee Steve Linsky was looking at them, and I'll be honest with you, Linsky can sometimes be a bit of a controversial ass, but 
I think he has a heart deep down somewhere, and if those were punches, I think Flash might need to look out for that yellow and red card disqualification. And there's another punch, but... Oh, there you go, Jack now with legal forearms off the ropes, but Flash just too big to win, and he launches Jack, Jack off the ropes again. And there we go, Flash went for a belly-to-belly, -belly. however, he's now switched to a wrist lock, and he's got it on tight. Flash bar with a wrist lock, and he sends Jack Xavier off the ropes. Jack's managed to duck. Duck, sorry, and catch it, and sends him over straight into the Hurricane Rana. Jack Xavier with an awesome arm drag there, and another one for Flash Barker. Now, do not forget, Flat Jack Xavier is a big, big man, and he managed to Hurricane Rana Flash Barker, but Flash with just that raw shot has just taken advantage. I mean, Nick, sorry to cut you off. You That's see right. the look on Jack Xavier's face. I mean, that was a powerful, powerful blow. Flash Barker now looks like he's going for the Roman knuckle lock, but no, he fooled us and he went for the kick, taking Jack Xavier down. I think it's going to be sure power and aggression over Jack Xavier's high-flying ability. I think it's clear to see that Flash Barker is this raw, experienced competitor. Meanwhile, you've got Jack, who might be nervous of the prospect. Oh, and Flash oh, got a leg bar! Oh, got a leg bar! And Jack's in the right! Linsky's trying to break up a hold, and Flash, the competitor in he is, released the hold. Nick, if Jack had been in the middle of the ring instead of being right next to the ropes. That would have been it. That would have been all over. With the quickness and ease, he managed to slip that move on. Jack Xavier, it, you know, I'd hate to be in Xavier's shoes. I'm not surprised. He's in there against with the uh, the former crowning jewel of the old school faction. I mean, come on, Flash Barker, so solid. He knows wrestling. It flows through his blood. And there he's showing his, his abilities in the ring against Jack. Jack, however, kicks Flash. And he's setting up for a neck Oh, nice neck break there a desperation move from Jack Xavier but no almost almost wasn't quite enough I mean Jack Xavier's gonna have to work on Flash Barker a little bit more as large a lad as Jack is he's not as big as Flash Barker he was not able to get enough body on body to really make an effective cover Flash now is going to oh nice move there it was almost like a, a Russian leg sweep variation there and another two count for Flash Barker. Jack Xavier's asking for a quicker count, but it, it will be a normal count, Jack. you just got to try harder to beat Flash Barker. That was the creativity I was talking about, Tony. I mean, Jack Xavier managed to hit that. I think it was an STF of sorts. He just hit it out of nowhere. I didn't see it coming, quite frankly. Off the rope for Flash Barker with a drop kick, and Jack nearly went straight through the ropes. Nice drop kick there. Not a move we see normally from Flash Barker, as Flash Barker has the front face lock now, but Jack Xavier takes him into the corner and gives Gives him a little bit of his own medicine with those Ric Flair-like chops. God, Jack has balls. He's really bringing it to Flash Barker here tonight. But Flash, oh, like that Sherman tank, he's got a body of armor on there. You can see the look on, look, look at Flash oh, Barker's oh. face. He's just laughing, he's grinning, and now the gloves are coming off. Oh, now that was just stupid from Jack Xavier. You don't want to trade kicks with Flash Barker, you goon. Nick, to be honest, I wouldn't want to trade anything with Flash Barker. Flash Barker is a devastating force inside that ring. The gloves are off and... Oh, my word! The chops are coming into play. Uh-oh, he's going to chop that... Oh, bloody hell! Look at this! He's, he's ripping the skin. The skin is melting off the very chest of Jack Xavier. And a beal out of the corner. And Jack is holding that lower back. Flash Barker, though, not letting up. A couple of stiff shoot-style knees. A couple of kicks there to the ribs. Jack's trying to fight back for a flash. Is, this is a no contest with the kicks, Tony, surely. They're just laying them into each other at the moment. Advantage has to be on Flash Barker. But he's asking Xavier, come on, bring it on. Give me what you got. Give me what you got. But Flash Barker is so powerful. He's answering back straight away, Nick. And oh, my word, his chops are devastating. It was quite clear what Flash Barker was trying to do. Jack and Xavier exhausted him himself with that small flurry of offense with those kicks and look at it now it worked flash barker is very much in control jack xavier took that close oh but nick blinking you'll miss him jack xavier managed to get in there with a the climbing enziguri both men are down but it's what was needed for that moment the climbing x kick out of nowhere i mean one moment flash barker is in control and now jack has managed to level the playing field just a little bit but flash is on his feet first tony flash i, I gotta say nick even after that move flash would still have the advantage but i may be being proven wrong as they are trading punches back and forth at the moment left and right left and right it does seem though no flash marker tony tony those are very blatant those are close fists and you know it nick you know what i'm gonna agree with you that was a close fist i mean the velocity that it, 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 
it took Jack Xavier over the top rope, and, and referee Steve Linsky has has given Flash Barker the yellow card. Rightly so, Nick, it was a closed fist. Well, Flash Barker better be very careful. If he starts throwing those fists again, he'll get a second yellow. And as a result, he will be disqualified. And I'm sure Flash Barker doesn't want to leave this contest in that situation. The question is, Tony, throughout this whole match, who's going to face James Ty for the number one contendership later on in the year? But Flash Barker into the steel railings. Jack Xavier outside. I think Jack's got the advantage. It may well be so Nick Jack Xavier sending Flash into the guardrail but Flash now with a reversal monkey toss oh my word Nick Jack Xavier just went upside down landed on his head into the guardrail an awesome move as you were just saying Jack Xavier may have the advantage on the outside I think you were proven wrong bleeding sand did I just see Flash Barker do a monkey flip how agile is this man talk about Jack Xavier being agile for a big guy but Flash Barker's even bigger and sometimes I wonder if he's even more agile Jack Xavier now oh with a shirt above his head again Flash Barker would not leave the chest area of Jack Xavier alone at all Nick Nick he must have lost some teeth on that one. Oh god I'm speechless Tony just kicked his teeth down his gut that was an awesome kick sending Jack Xavier up almost over into the fans he must have lost some teeth Flash Barker, what a dominating force. Oh my, Jack Xavier's like a rag doll out there. Flash Barker, yeah, he's clapping the ringside fans. He could very well be on his way to facing the FWA champion. I think he must think that in his mind at the moment, Nick. Clapping hands with fans may be taking a little too long. He may be thinking, well, I've got Xavier where I want him. I'm going to put him away now as he sends him off into the turnbuckle. But Jack Xavier, desperation oh, move. Oh, oh, gets to the top. He's going for this trademark Tony Angle DDT, but he got caught. Flash Barker takes him back to the corner. I thought we were going to see that DDT. Slap, very disrespectful there. And now, oh, I don't like the look of this. If you've got a guy at Flash Barker's raw power, lobbing you off the top rope. It's gonna be a world of hurt, and it's the beginning of the end here for both the funky, men. chunky monkey. Oh my word, Nick! Both men were on the top rope, and Jack Xavier went crashing down with the superplex, his own velocity bringing him back up onto his feet. Nick, oh my word, Flash Baker, sorry, Flash Barker, clearly has the advantage in this one. I think it's gonna be Flash Barker walking out of here tonight with a victory. We could be looking at Flash Barker versus James Ty, but let's not underestimate Jack Xavier. We've seen him pull miracles out of the back before. This is the man who defeated Mikey Whitwreck. He really, I reckon he could still win this thing, but he's really going to pull it out of the back now. And, oh, no, he was, I know what you say, he needs to pull it out of the bag. And, oh, a two count. But if Flash Barker is going to keep using moves like that devastating spine buster, it's got to be all over for Mr. Xavier. I don't know if you've been hearing the fans as of late, but they've been whispering about how hard Flash Barker is. He is the man who, in their eyes, is quadruple hard. And, oh, my God. In news like that, Tony, you can see why. One, One two, no! no. What a kick out. He may be quadruple hard, but he can fly as well, Nick. An awesome Hurricane Rana takeover there, but Jack Xavier still has the life left in him, Nick. It's his shot at being the number one contender for the FWA title. And you've got to believe in Jack Xavier's career, he at least wants to say he was at the top of his game. And here we go, off the ropes again. The switch, Flash Barker off the ropes, and Xavier's going for one of his innovative moves. He's got the cover. One, two, and a kick out from Flash Barker. Xavier's going to need to try and do everything he can, pull every move he can out of the bag. He needs to take Flash Barker down. Flash Barker getting to his feet slowly, but Xavier is up first. You see now, Jack Xavier hits those innovating moves, and I don't know if Flash Barker actually knows how to contend with them. And here we go, he's setting up for the rolling release. It's oh, Nick, but he didn't release, he held on, and it was almost like a neck break. And a two. It was a two count. I thought that could have been in Nick. I thought it was going to be the uh, rolling release expect, but he held on and drove it down into a sort of neck break. I heard Hooper. rumors of Jack Xavier. Oh, lovely kick. I heard rumors of Jack Xavier possibly debuting a spiraling suplex slam, and it was devastating. But Flash Barker, foot, bottom rope, he just barely saved himself. Ring presence there, Nick. Flash Barker, knowing where he is in that ring at all times, oh. managed to get the foot on the rope. Flash Barker, ring general, knows where he is at all times. He knew where he was, got his foot on the rope, and he just saved himself. And here we go, he's going for the Xavier. Can he hit it? Can he hit it? But Flash over the top. Oh, Nick! Nick, 
He reversed it, flash in the pan. Surely one, two, three. It's all over. Flash Barker. Flash Barker reversed Jack Xavier's finisher into his own. Devastating flash in the pan. It's going to be James Tight versus Flash Barker. You know what? I didn't even bother counting that time. The minute you hit the flash in the pan, I don't care who you are. You're out like a light. Flash Barker managed to escape very gracefully on my hand. He escaped the Xaviator. He got the reverse DDT position and bang! Flash in a pan. And now, later on, we're going to see, well, later on in the year, we're going to see Flash Barker versus James Tyne. And the winner of that will go on to face whomever the FWA heavyweight champion is. And, of course, later on tonight in the main event, we might find out who that champion will be as the anarchist Doug Williams will face the American Dragon in a two out of three falls challenge. And look at the show of sportsmanship here, Tony. It's true, Nick. Flash Barker and Jack Xavier are both awesome wrestlers, but they're quite good friends as well. Flash Barker and Jack Xavier put on an awesome match for these fans. Flash Barker walked out with a victory, but it could have been Xavier's. True. It could have been True. Xavier's. It, could have it was been. one one small move there, and Flash Barker managed to get the victory. <laughs> I think that was in reference to Frontiers of Honor. As you know, Steve Linsky uh, called the match a draw and refused to give Flash five more minutes. And you know what, Linsky? I'd just be glad he didn't do more than that. Maybe a little bit of payback there for the referee. Flash Barker walking out the victor tonight. It's going to be Flash Barker versus James Ty. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, it's Birchall versus Hampton Court. Finally, it's going to happen, Tony, and it's coming up next. inadvertently caused Jack Xavier to lose a loser leaves the FWA match to the Duke of Danger. Then again at season's beatings, Virgil's running caused the Duke to win a match, a six-man tag match. Correct, Tony. Many believe there was collusion between the Duke himself and the Man Mountain Virgil. However, it was at FWA New Frontiers that the Duke's gift of money was kicked straight into his face by Virgil. Then Nick, due to a broken arm, suffered on the British breakout tour, and along with a doctor's note, he managed to weasel out of his match with Virgil at Frontiers of Honor. This then led to the near destruction of the team of Double Dragon, which brings us here tonight and the Duke's come up with.
Simmons is a legend. Shut up! Springboard, what bloody hell! 
He manages to move sort of ball up onto his feet, Nick, and then taking them both down the clothesline. Up on the second rope and double elbow drop. Man, have you ever seen anything quite like Virgil? No, I haven't actually, but I'm still, I'm still pretty determined that Simmons will pull it out of the back. Oh, Virgil's got him. Some sort of STF. Oh, drops him down one there. Drops him down twice. Oh, you're a taking him down and almost making him one with the cam. Oh, but a sly slow and he's climbed up to the second row. He's going for a double oh, He's been caught. Crap. Oh, there it is. One. Oh, no. no. He's fighting through. Oh, oh, Tony. He's not again. He rolled through, Nick. He rolled through. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, he's got it. Oh, that rage crush. Surely that is it, Nick. How can you doubt the man's talent? Oh, my lord. The specialist is out. The Mad Mountain Virgil has just squashed the former All-England champion. And now he's picking up the dead weight of Mark Sloan. Virgil has oh, evil now. intentions, Nick. That's all I will say. As Simmons, you know, Simmons, you say about Sly Sloan, I say Sly Simmons, pulling, pulling Mark Sloan outside of the ring, but Virgil won't have any of that, Nick. Hey, that's not Virgil Sly, that's will just go, smart. Virgil will go around the ring, he will chase you, he will get the job done. He just wants to hurt somebody. Well, no doubt he will want to hunt down these two men. And there's the Duke of Danger. Very strategic danger there. He's kind of, I wouldn't say hiding, more just protecting his own investment. That doesn't look that way to me, Nick, as it looks as though Simmons and Sloan are trying to bring Virgil in the hard way. Virgil lands on his feet. A blow there for Mark Sloan and one for Simmons. He's got Simmons. Whoa, and now whoa, it's whoa, got Mark whoa. Sloan. Whoa, what's he doing here? My Lord! <laughs> Double suplex! Oh, one man double suplex! Look at Simmons' face! Okay, okay, we're gonna see Simmons butler up any minute now. I just know he's gonna he's gonna come up from the ashes and he's gonna take on Virgil. I'm kidding myself, aren't I, Tony? Uh yes, Nick, I think you are. Simmons is gonna have to do a whole hell of a lot of buttlering up to get anywhere near Virgil turned up tonight. Oh, oh, what's this? Oh no! Oh, no. oh low blow there from Mark Sloan. Now Mark Sloan setting up the back super, picks him up and down and Virgil. No, I think he landed on the back of his head there, Tony. And maybe Virgil Tony. Out. Virgil might be down. What was the referee doing, Nick, during that little uh, little uh, skirmish there? The referee blatantly saw what Mark Sloan was doing. Some nice kicks in the corner there from the specialist. But you know, Virgil, don't count him out just yet. Hey, well. Oh! Perhaps, in my opinion, the most devastating move in the FWA today. And when it's my opinion, Tony, it's the only opinion. If it wasn't bad enough for these two with Virgil having to go them, now Simmons is actually accidentally attacking his own partner. Whoa, 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 is whoa, 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 Mr. Virgil is well in control. Mr. Virgil, when did you get so polite? Oh, oh no, he's got Sloney, he's got him up on his shoulders. Could this be this tornado neck breaker? Oh, oh him neck down. Ow. He's taken him down, but again, he's rolled through. He's still holding on. There is more damage to be done. Nice for a slow oh, from Virgil. No, it looks like a pump handle of It's some a move. Sort. We still have no name for it, but quite frankly, this could be moving. Oh, oh my word! Simmons is down. Sloan is down. And Dean Ayers is ordering referee Steve Linsky to begin the count. Now remember. Double Dragon of Frontiers of Honor were wiped out and just left to die. And now Virgil's just leaving the ring because he knows, I think he knows it's over, Tony. Nick, quite simply, the damage has been done. The look of shock on the Duke's face was worth it if you ask me, Nick. Oh my God, the look on the Duke's face, as you said, I think he knows that someday he will have to meet that man, Virgil. The contract has been signed for the match to happen. The question is when? The Duke, he has a date with destiny, but when will it be? When will the arm be healed? Tony, this is a mess. As you can see, the Duke there, well, I don't know, maybe trying to bring some life back into Simmons.
maybe trying to get him to butler up, eh, Nick? As you can see, the Duke clutching his arm. He's storming out of the ring. He is not impressed with Simmons' efforts tonight. Well, I'm not, I'm not bloody surprised he's not impressed. Simmons was squashed, basically, by Virgil. And as for Sloan, he wasn't much bloody use, was he? Are you still trying to tell me, Nick, that the Duke isn't trying to touch but a duck, sorry, Virgil? I don't know. The Duke is a conniving, sneaky, and downright evil man. And I reckon that when it comes down to it, the Duke of Danger will have the last lap. That may be so, Nick, but as you can see, Mark Sloan has been left in the ring, left late to waste. The Duke doesn't care about Mark Sloan, hey, Tony, and neither do these fans. Can you hear it? Even though Simmons lost, Simmons mania still running wild. Simmons echoing through the arena. Superstar, the American Dragon. Of course, being trained by Shawn Michaels and training mates with Paul London and Snake. Now, American Dragon and Doug Williams have been having an awesome rivalry over in America. And ever since Christopher Daniels took the NWA title back to America, the American Dragon has had his sights set on coming over here and winning that belt. Since then they have clashed many times over, but Doug has always claimed that if the American Dragon entered a British style two out of three balls contest, American Dragon would stand a chance. So not only is the FWA title on the line, but so is Doug's word, Doug's pride, and everything that Doug Williams stands for. One thing's for sure, Nick, in a two out of three falls match, it's going to be the man with the most stamina that wins. We know that American Dragon and Doug Williams have had an Iron Man contest in America, and American Dragon came out on top. But on home soil, with his home fans behind him, is Doug Williams going to leave tight the FWA champion, or will it be the American Dragon? The fans giving the American Dragon a bit of grief in regards to the mask. But it's up to the American Dragon if he wants to wear it. There is a lot of pride and respect when it comes to mass in professional wrestling. I don't blame him for wanting to keep it on. Now, as you mentioned, for this match, you've really got to be in the top condition. It's two out of three falls. I mean, Doug Williams is such an all-round competitor. He can go the distance, but so is the American Dragon. Come on, Tony, look at them. You can just tell that they're very evenly matched, athletically speaking. But the question is, whose technical ability will allow them to walk home FWA champion. And we see the handshake, Nick, and it looks as though the match is underway. And here we go, and the lockup! And Doug Williams and American Dragon, they're jockeying for position right here. 
Let's see who's going to get the best of this. Money's on Doug Williams, who's just forced the Dragon into the corner and still finding a way. Referee Andrew Coyne, he's calling for the break, and he finally, yes, yeah, just got it. Doug Williams managing to power Dragon over into the corner, but Dragon did not want to let go of the grip he had hold on Doug Williams. This title does mean a lot to Doug Williams, but how good would it be for American Dragon to go back to America being the British heavyweight champion? Well, I'm sure the American Dragon, I mean, I mean, obviously it's the nature of his persona. He's very patriotic, but let's be forward about this. Let's be frank. Doug Williams, he's an ambassador for British wrestling. He himself is a patriot. They're very, very alike. They are each of us counterparts, and I think their abilities are showing right here. It's true, Nick, what you were saying, they are almost like mirror images of each other. They are both very well versed in the submission style. It looks as though Dragon is maybe trying to get an arm lock onto Doug Williams at the moment. But Doug Williams is trying to fight out of this with all of his might. They look, they're, they're wrapped up almost like a pretzel at the moment, Nick. You can't tell one from the other. Well, Doug Williams is going for a head scissors, but the American Dragon has just forced Doug Williams into some sort of lock. And Doug Williams now with the head scissors, can the American Dragon escape? Dragon's going to want to try and power out of this any way he can. Dragon oh. with a nice head down there, but Doug Williams still keeping the lock on, but Dragon managed to flip out of it. Now, I think the American Dragon could very well be mocking Doug Williams. That is the way Doug Williams escapes the head scissors. I mean, I've seen him many times. I've watched many of Doug's matches. I'm a huge fan of the anarchist work, so I know what I'm talking about here, Tony. But let's see. I mean, I think the American Dragon himself has been watching a lot of tapes, and I'm sure Doug Williams has been watching the American Dragon too. In a match of this caliber, Nick, you would have to watch your tapes. You would have to read your sheets. You would have to do anything you could to learn anything about your opponent. Oh, oh, oh. But look at Doug Williams at the moment, the way he is stretching the American Dragon just by using his head and his arms. He's arcing himself up, still able to use the leg to knock Dragon back down to the floor. But Dragon used just pure power there and pulled, up, uh, sorry, pulled Doug Williams over. I'm not surprised the Dragon got the leverage to do that at such a low level of the ground. Doug Williams was stretching the groin of the American Dragon. Dragon managed to kind of roll Doug out of it and now we're getting back to this kind of uh, dead end situation. Both men starting off again and you've got to leave with three rounds to go through. Well, two to three rounds anyway. You might want to believe that this opening section might be extended because they've got to feel each other out if they want to win the entire contest. It's true, Nick. This is going to be a wear-down point, a wear-down position, if you will. This is going to be the point in the match where you're just going to want to try and get in as many submissions, as many blows, as many kicks, as many moves as you can to try and wear your opponent down and get the all-important first full victory. The American Dragon is desperate to get an early pinfall, but Doug Williams is so strong. Look at the bridge on that man. It's true, Nick. Doug Williams is just using his pure power to get the Dragon. Oh, look at this oh. move, Nick. It's a signature Doug Williams move. It's something we see before. Doug Williams power coming into play once again. That was very inventive. He was stretching the American Dragon, but Dragon managed to slip out of the hole. Couple of forearms, and now Doug Williams got to the bottom rope. Referee Andrew Coyne warning off the American Dragon, because don't forget the yellow red card are still in effect, even if it is two out of three falls. It's true, Nick. The American Dragon might not be used to our yellow and red card system, but one thing's for sure, if he does break the rules, he'll learn really Really quickly. Very, very quickly. Doug now. Oh, lovely grovet right there. He might have it in very tight. Referee Andrew Coyne there checking to see if he isn't a choke and he's got the body scissors. It's a nice front face lock, maybe a grovet, but he has got the body, body scissors as well and it is sunk right in. Dragon has no place to go. He is going to try and weasel his way out though and he manages to and he's got Doug Williams now. Looks like he's maybe working over the knee. Looks like he's working over the knee. He's trying to stretch. Oh, he's got the other leg as well. Could Dragon be uh, planning some sort of submission? Or oh, look at that. I would have thought Doug Williams would have got the body scissors, but Dragon's just completely cut off the strength to those legs, and he's working on that left knee of the of uh, Doug Williams. It's true, Nick. We know Doug Williams is a former judo champion. I'm not sure if the American Dragon does have any martial arts, any judo background, but they are both so well versed in stretching each other and trying to rip apart the muscles inside your body. Well, these two men, phenomenal technicians. I mean, you saw it. Doug Williams had a roll-up on the American Dragon, but Dragon was right there with a submission hold of his own, and now Dragon backs away from Doug Williams. Now, regardless of what you might think of the American Dragon, he is a sports competitor. He is, I'm quite frankly, his heart's in the right place, as is Doug Williams. It's true, Nick, at the moment, he's adhering to 
all the rules laid down by the FWA governing body. And so far, the fans have been treated to a real pure wrestling clinic. It's been submission move for submission move. And once again, we start off in with a lock-up and a headlock now from the American Dragon. American Dragon now signing up that headlock. I mean, let's, I mean, obviously, Doug Williams isn't the sort of man to submit from a headlock, of all things, but he could set up into future things. Off the ropes, the match is speeding up a little bit. And, whoa. A shoulder block there from the American Dragon onto Doug Williams, but Doug Williams does not move an inch, and once again, it's the irresistible force meeting the immovable object, Nick. This is where technique's out straight out the window and the intensity comes in. American Dragon leg win. He's got the first big move on Doug there, and it looks like Doug's leg could very well be hurt. And the American Dragon, being the ring technician that he is, he's right on that leg like a rabid dog. Right on that leg, working over the knee, working over the ankle. You know, we know that the American Dragon's finishing move is the move he likes to call cattle mutilation. Basically, a head and neck submission. Will we see him try and use a variation tonight or maybe a completely different move? He's targeting one area of Doug Williams' body and it's obvious his knee and his leg at the moment. Maybe he's going to go for the leg submission oh, to oh. win the first fall. Oh, look at this. The American Dragon is quite frankly taking the mick. He's got a British figure four on Doug Williams now. And whilst Doug is in this hole, he's trying to get him down. He's trying to get his shoulders down. But Doug Williams knows the escape. I mean, come on, it's a British figure four. You would have thought the ambassador of England would know the reversal, Tony. It's true, Nick. It's the same with a figure and any figure four. Once you can reverse the pressure, the move is changed around, and whoever's doing the move is now in quite a lot of pain. Dragon was quite near the ropes and did grab the ropes. The broke the host, sorry, was broken, and now we go into this stalemate position once again. Well, the fact that the American Dragon was so close to the rope shows the man's intelligence. Oh, straight back to that leg. Look at that. Now it's interesting. Obviously, he's working on the leg. The question is, is he trying to get a leg? Submission off Doug Williams, or do you think he's trying to hobble him so that he's, you know, he's on one leg for the entire contest? It's a very good question, Nick. You know, if he damages the leg enough, not only could he win the first fall, but he could be quite in, an, in a good position for the second fall. But you were right on that. American Dragon just great finding back and using the elbow on the back of Doug Williams' head as well. Doug Williams smartly goes to the ropes once again. Well, it looks like uh, the Dragon was working on that knee, trying to rip the ligaments out with that vicious. I forgot what it's called Indian Death Lock. That's it. And here we go. A double leg lock situation. Now, don't fancy Doug Williams' chances. American Dragon's been working on the leg this entire time. But Doug, maybe out of desperation, is trying to get a leg submission of his hold. But the American Dragon's just kicked him off. Back in control. Just using pure power to take Doug Williams back down. But Doug Williams, once again, he's like a dog with a bone. He will not let go of that hold. As both men now rolling, it looked they couldn't possibly. They're what? trying to get under the bottom rope. No one wants to break that. And they both come crashing down to the mats. Well, it was a wise match. I was thinking that was Doug Williams who led to the idea. Referee Andrew Coyne will have no choice but to break the hold on the outside. Any submission hold has to be in the middle of the ring, Tony. It's true, Nick. Both men did not want to let go of that hold. It's not often you see a submission hold being carried to the outside of the ring, but it was just then. Dragon and Williams back into the ring once again. And here we go. Once again, the stalemate, but this time, Doug is heavily favouring that left knee. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about you. I'll be honest with you. I think the American Dragon could very well work on that leg, get the first fall, and maybe even the entire contest. You know, Nick, American Dragon obviously came with a game plan, and he's working to his fullest voltage, and he is just targeting that knee with a vicious blow there, and another Dragon corkscrew leg whip. Uh, he's just basically taking Doug Williams' legs apart. Uh, it looks like he's trying to get Doug over, perhaps for a Boston Crab, but Doug's near the ropes, much like the American Dragon earlier. Knows where he was, got the ropes, able to break the submission hold. But now, American Dragon, sod technicality, he's just stomping away on that injured leg. That's right, Nick. He's going to try and maybe, you know, block up that muscle, try and inflict as much damage as he can to that one area. He just wants Doug Williams to be down out on the mat so he can get the first fall. He wants to knock that leg muscle up, bruise it up bad so he can work it out. Doug's got the waist lock. Doug's got the waist lock, possibly a setup for the... Oh, Anarchy. He's taking him into the corner, Nick. And we've seen this before. Is he going to go for the... He's going to go for the Chaos Theory, but American Dragon manages to reverse it. American Dragon now with a waist lock. 
Doug Williams does have hold of the arm, though. Doug Williams again with a waist lock. The American Dragon. Oh, oh, he's, he's going, going for it. it. American Dragon. He's got it. He's counting mutilation. And Doug Williams taps out straight away. One fall to the American Dragon. What an upset. Doug made a very big error. He tried to hit the Chaos Theory German suplex, but it was far too early. The pace of the match was not ready. The American Dragon managed to take advantage of the situation. He hit the cattle mutilation out of nowhere. American Dragon is leading 1-0 at the moment. American Dragon needs one more fall, either a pinfall or a submission, to win this contest, Tony. You know, Nick, uh, the, the Chaos Theory is not a move you pull out of desperation. It's a move you pull out when you're in control. And, and to me, it looks as though Doug Williams may be a little bit scared at the moment, may be a little bit worried that his FWA title is slipping away. He tapped out immediately to the cattle mutilation. He's going to want to get back in charge of this match. But once again, the American Dragon is still being the dominant force. And now the American Dragon, he seems to have changed tactic. He's working on the arm of Doug Williams. And I can't understand this. Maybe he's just trying to weaken as many points as he can on the anarchist. You know, Nick, it, it would be a good idea. He's weakened the leg. He's already used cattle mutilation to win one fall. Now maybe if he'll work on the arm and he'll try a different submission. I mean, the way he's just attacking the body parts of Doug Williams, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see. But I don't really want to see American Dragon walk out of here, the FWA champion tonight, Nick. Now, one thing that has just occurred to me, Doug Williams, um, as far as I'm aware, he does not have many injuries in his career. However, he has broken his collarbone. Uh, that, that was many, many years ago, though. But maybe the American Dragon is picking on that one weakness. You never know, Nick. I mean, the American Dragon is a smart ring man, but Doug Williams goes up and underneath there. Doug Williams up and over on the American Dragon. American Dragon goes through Doug Williams. Doug Williams just dizzy the American Dragon. He's got a pinfall. American Dragon kicked out, but that is the type of quick pinfall that could cost you a fall. And now Doug Williams, lovely forearm there. He's a European upcut, I might add. It looks like he might be adding a bit of intensity to his move. And now American Dragon back again on the leg. Doug Williams kicks him off, however. Off the ropes. Doug Williams with a leap from. American Dragon turns around and goes, and there's the pinfall. One, two. American oh, Dragon oh, 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 now oh. takes over the pinfall. One, two. At the moment, Doug Williams, no. Up and over, one, two, no, a two count as well. At the moment, Nick, it's Cat as Ken Can wrestle. They are trying to outmaneuver each other, outpin each other, trying to do anything they can to get that vital pin. Do you think maybe Doug Williams is panicking? I mean, I can't believe I've just used the word panic and Doug Williams in the same sentence, but he's one fall down. Maybe he's trying to get a quick pinfall out of the American Dragon. He's got to be trying for it, Nick. I mean, he's, he's one pinfall away from losing the FWA British title. And at the moment, American Dragon is being so dominant with his submission holds as he cinches in the abdominal stretch now. I mean, Doug Williams has got to be in a whole world of hurt. Now he's working on the abdominal area. Referee Andrew Coyne is checking on Doug Williams. The question is, will Williams submit and allow Dragon to leave? Two falls to none and taking the FWA title with him. I mean, American Dragon is very close to the ropes, Nick. He can quite easily cheat, but he's not. He's using his ring awareness. And, and look at the way he's putting some extra torque onto the head of Doug Williams. Doug Williams is trying to pull back on the mask, but there isn't much to grip on the mask. He can't do as much damage as Dragon is doing to him. He manages to take him over with a hip tuck. Whoa, 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 straight away whoa, whoa. into the armbar. Armbar, this could be the submission for Doug Williams. Pinfall, no. American Dragon got his shoulder up there, but obviously with a move like that, your shoulders could be up. And the American Dragon, with that bridge, he's desperate to keep his body off his own shoulders. But wait, he's down again, too. But, oh, the rope saved the Dragon. It was a nice bridge there from the American Dragon and just gave him that little bit of momentum to reach the ropes there. Doug Williams sends Dragon off into the ropes. Dragon on the reversal, straight back into the headlock, up and over. It looks as though Doug Williams has got him in a Boston Crab. No, American Dragon, but they're too close to the ropes, Nick. They're too they're close, too to, close the to the ropes. They're going to need to. Yep, yeah, they broke the hold there. Referee, I think... and, referee Andrew Coyne was very careful whether to count that four or not. It was dangerously close it's to the It's true, ropes. Nick. I think if they'd have been in the middle of the ring, that could have been it there for Doug Williams. As American Dragon is viciously laying in those forearms, those uppercuts, whatever you'd like to call them, as he takes him down now. Whoa, he just took the snap there, straight onto his feet. Doug Williams showing his agility. Doug Williams with a very tight roll. One, two, but a kick out by the American Dragon. Dragon now. Oh, oh, oh he's going Dragon. for it again. Nick, it looks Tony. as though he's going for it. It looks as though he's going for the count. He's got it. No, Doug Williams manages to roll out of it. Doug Williams Doug out Williams. of nowhere. He's going for some sort of ocean cyclone suplex. And there he is. Very tight roll. One, two, three. He got it. He got it. Reading the match.
that is Joel Frey with Doug Williams has made it one apiece now. Much like how the American Dragon took advantage of Doug Williams messing up his own big finishing manoeuvre. Doug Williams just did the same. I mean, American Dragon was going for the cow mutilation. Doug Williams slipped out, hit that suplex variation, and he got the pinfall out of the blue, Tony. It's a very good point you've made there. Doug Williams managed to slip out of cacao mutilation once. American Dragon managed to slip out of the Chaos Theory. Now this being the third and final fall, what are both these men going to be thinking? Right, well, he slipped out of my finish. I oh, slipped out Tony, of Tony, Tony, what sorry. What are we going to see? No worries. worries. Sorry to cut you off, but American Dragon, what's this? Instead of the, the lock-up, he's just throwing punches and forearms, but Doug Williams is having none of it. He's setting up the suplex, Tony. Whoa, he's up there pretty high. He's holding him up there for a long time, Nick. He's letting the blood rush to his head. So when he comes crashing down, just like that, and he flick more damage, but American Dragon Whoa. is straight back up. I mean, the gloves are really off now, Nick. Jesus, this ring is just brewing with patriotic pride, Tony. Oh, and there we go, another suplex, and oh! Doug Williams straight back onto his feet, mimicking the American Dragon. Both of these men know it's all to play for in this third and final fall. They're talking to each other, they are psyching themselves up. I mean, the slaps are going back and forth now, Nick. I've never seen such... Uh, I'm seeing such answers from these two men. They're obviously very proud. They're trying to demean the other man. Doug Williams telling the ref to back off and, whoa, another slap, another slap there. Tony, what's going on? I'm not sure, Nick, but he's just broken down into a fight at the moment as the chops are being traded back and forth. Doug Williams with the uppercut. American, American Dragon, Dragon with the, the uppercut. uppercut. And they're, just, they're just exchanging uppercuts, Tony. There's a forearm there, bit of variety. Another forearm, and, whoa, another forearm. Um, Doug looks bemused. He does, Nick. It's just move for move, back and forward. Is, is it going to be a case of whomever knocks out the one first? Well, I don't know. They're just trying to find out who the best forearm shotter is. And there you go, American Dragon. Oh, Doug with another suplex. Takes him. Oh, Nick, it was almost like a brain bust there. Dragon is down. He's not leaping to his feet this time, which leads me to believe that Doug Williams has the advantage. Well, Doug Williams managed to land a little bit more on the head, and now he's working on the head, knees away, off the ropes, and a high knee, and I think the American Dragon could be out too! No! Oh, wasn't meant to be that time. A lovely high knee there from Doug Williams. Now, Doug Williams is in the driver's seat. He's going to want to stay there for as long as he possibly can. Work over the head, work over whatever he has to. Just make sure he keeps hold of his FWA British title. Oh, a knee there, and Doug Williams is setting up for another high knee, but the American Dragon saw it coming. Went for close line, but it does and there's the high knee. Doug Williams is in control. Oh! You know what's oh, happening oh, now, Nick? Oh, it's oh. your favourite move. If Doug Williams can hit this, I'm sure it's all over for oh, the dragon. I love this move. Ladies and gentlemen, bomb scare! Oh, oh, Nick, he hit it perfectly. Right onto the chest. One, two, no! I cannot believe that. Doug Williams hit it square in the sternum of the American Dragon. The American Dragon managed to kick out, but only barely. you got to believe that the end might be nigh for the American. Uh, well, he's going to the way, so perhaps the Germans... Oh! Where did that come from, Tony? You thought Doug was in control, but then out of nowhere, an enziguri from the American Dragon. The American Dragon is showing his heart right now. He's proving that he's not going to give up. If there's an ounce of fight left in him, he will use it. American Dragon coming in, oh, bloody Sam, Tony. That was a hell of a forearm. And now, Northern Lights suplex. He's got one, one two. two. No! Doug Williams kicks out. Perfect Northern Lights suplex there, Nick. But Doug Williams still managing to get the shoulder. That was almost like a fisherman's Northern Lights. He actually had the leg hooked as well. He had such a tight pinfall. But Doug's heart is still in this contest. American Dragon went for a cyclone forearm. Oh, awesome. Didn't get him the first time, got him the second time. One, two, three. No! Oh, Doug Williams once again. He takes any more shots like that to the head, Nick, and it's all over for Doug, Doug Williams. Doug Williams slipped out last minute. My Lord, Tony, this is a hell of a contest. And it looks like American Dragon could be going for it all. He's put Doug Williams on the top rope now. This looks precarious. Nick, if this was a normal match, it would be all over at the minute. But as it stands, it's two out of three falls. We're in the third and final fall. Doug Williams has American Dragon up onto the top rope. Oh, sorry, the other way around. But Doug Williams is fighting back. American Dragon falls down. Doug Williams is going to want to try and get off them ropes as quickly as possible. But Dragon is straight back up. And Doug Williams once again has hold of the head. He's determined to hit that back. Suplex up! He hits it. Oh, both. That must have taken a lot out of both men. They're probably both very tired. It's been a hard one, contest. One, two, three, no! Did he get it? 
That was a two, Tony. That was a that was a very close two, Nick. And American Dragon Dunk once again. He's got it. It's in. It's in. It's in. tight. American it's tight. Dragon. Dunk must tap. Surely Dunk must tap to fight for another day. But Dunk, he's he's with all the strength. He's fighting out of it. He's managed to reverse it, Nick. I've never seen anyone do that. He's reversed it. Dragon is still holding on, but Doug Williams now has the waist lock on the American Dragon. Dragon is trying to fight out well, of well, the moment. Well, Doug's got some sort of a lock it. Whoa. He can't be. I f oh my lord! Oh my lord, Nick! One, two, three! It's all over! Doug Williams! I don't know how to describe that. It was like a, an uber chaos theory suplex. That was fantastic! Out of the blue, I've never seen him hit anything like that, Tony. It was almost like a dragon suplex version of the chaos theory. Devastating whenever way you look at it. That's a pretty accurate way of calling it, Tony. I have to say, it's the exclamation mark to end this fantastic contest, which is cat a fantastic event here at Rockford Civic Hall. I wasn't sure, Nick, which way I was going to go. Were we going to crown a new champion in the American Dragon, or was it going to be Doug Williams? It turned out to be Doug Williams walking out here tonight, still the FWA British Heavyweight Champion. Tony, what can I say? We've had a fantastic evening of blood, guts and glory. Doug Williams, what a win. Still your Frontier Wrestling Alliance Heavyweight Champion. Well, I've been Tony Giles. I have been Nick London. Thank you and good night.